guys, we have a banger of an episode. This is a long, fun episode with the Schmoll Daddy, huh? Yeah, we just did it. It was so much fun. Kevin's still here. He's drawing dicks in the background. And guys, we're so stoked to have you on board. First, we got Irvine coming up. Irvine Improv. We got to sell it out. It's our hometown show. Dude, September 28th. One we're show, let's make it home. two. We're coming let's home. Let's make it two. I mean, tickets are oh, going fast. Oh, yeah, if we fast sell out one, one, we can sell out the second. We can yeah. do another one. Oh, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, let's do two. Yeah, tickets are going fast for that one, for real. So I like doing two shows in a night. You're always hotter on the second one, I feel like. Absolutely. So, guys, get your tickets at chatjt.com. Also, check this site for more dates. We're also brought to you by a new sponsor, Blue Chew. What up, Blue Chew? Summer's here. Do you want to bring the heat in the bedroom? Pow, pow, pow. You want to bring a big boner to the bedroom, huh? Uh, always. I'd like to bring as big as one I got, unless like we're really close, and then at that point I don't put as much pressure on myself. Nice. Well, Blue Chew wants to help you, JT, and Kevin have better sex. And Chad. Thank you. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Try to cut himself out of it. <laughs> and we've got a special deal for our listeners. <laughs> Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code GODEEP at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code GODEEP to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. I will say this. I, I used to take a lot of Viagra when I was single because I wasn't feeling connected to the people, but I wanted to put on a good show, you know, especially people talk. Um... You take it sometimes and then the gal's like busy or doesn't want to do it or whatever. And then you're stuck with the boner all night. But you can have some good solo jam sessions still. Nice. I mean, never let a boner go to waste. We're also brought to you by Rumpel. Rumpel's on a mission to introduce the world to better blankets. Guys, they have the original puffy blanket. So nice. They made that? Yeah, it's like eco-friendly, durable materials, cool dudes who made it, great outdoor gear. Were old blankets not eco-friendly? Not like this, dude. It's different. Not made by cool dudes that look super sick. They're ultra packable, water and stain resistant. Guys, go to rumple.com slash go deep and enter code go deep at checkout to get 10% off your first order. We're also brought to you by Helix Sleep. You guys know Helix Sleep. We love Helix Sleep. I love my Helix Sleep mattress. I remember the first night I slept on my Helix Sleep mattress, you were like, dude, you slept so well. Yeah, you seem so rested the next day. Yeah, because you should never have to compromise on Your eyes on popped comfort. with vitality. Thanks, brother. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash go deep and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long with Helix. Better sleep starts now. We're finally brought to you by the legends at Liquid IV, guys. If you want to stay hydrated, if you want to get that good hydration, you... Liquid IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America. It's now available and sugar-free. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code GODEEP at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you use promo code GODEEP at liquidiv.com. Start the show. Let's go. Let's go. You're gonna have to be patient for this one. Okay? What, but are you already? You want to kick off with you playing? Yeah. You don't want us talking. No. Okay. Yeah. Well. Do, 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 do. You're gonna. You're so you gonna don't want me to open there. the? Huh? You don't want me, you want me to open the podcast? I'll give you something to open. Oh. With the podcast. But 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 so you want us to shut it down now and just let you play? Yeah. We'll don't do it talk. live. Yeah. So start the pod with you just playing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Whatever you want to do. You guys do. ready? Yeah. I mean, I think we're good. So, so no, no talking All before. Right. I mean, this bit. You've exhausted this bit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Sorry, I mm-hmm. snorted. That was, okay. that was lame. I'm sorry I snorted. That was lame. Okay, you, are you guys ready? Go, baby. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Because you were, you did get a bit, you were nervous. I wasn't nervous. You said we could cut it. Huh? Go. We're ready? I'm <laughs> You're doing the bit now. I mean, I'm not doing the bit. I want to start. Dude, suck me off, baby. Let's go. All right. And we're doing it. Well, we're not. It's not going to be part song. of it. You're we're going to do. Song. It's a Joe's. It's a Joe's dong song. Yeah. But that's not. It's going to start with the song. You are now doing the bit more than I was doing the bit. Uh, I'm pretty good at doing bits. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Aaron, we're ready. Why are you laughing at that? I don't know. (laughs) 
Aaron, can you cut to me and Chad listening too? You saw Joe's dong <laughs> And it growed in the sun <laughs> A grown Joe's crazy dong <laughs> <laughs> And then it was tall as the trees Climb it for me. <laughs> A grown one, Joe's crazy dog. Da 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 Joe's dog is so long. <laughs> I screwed up a couple times there. That's what it's. Uh, no, let me let us applaud you. Let us applaud you. It was long, yeah. Yeah. Like Joe's dong. Wow, it was long. That was, you man, know, that was fantastic. I'm yeah. not a musician. I can't. I can't perfect everything. So I screwed up a couple times. But I, I think I, I got the gist of it. I swear to God, I didn't notice. I just thought it was super, super long. You guys liked it? I loved. Yeah, that. it was long. What is, is that? Like an insult? Is this another bit? No, it was just long. Is that when you? It's, it's Pink Floyd. It's long. There's a buildup. Oh, I love Pink Floyd. Do you? I do. I love Pink Floyd. But most of their songs are long. It's great. Okay. Remind me of, yeah. Okay. Remind me yeah. of other long songs. You right, should do You should do Joe's dong but for brick in the wall. Cuz oh. his dong is technically a brick that you throw in the wall. Although I know brick in the wall is about building the wall. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Here's another brick in the wall. Maybe we need to start the podcast with the pre-bit and then go into that. I don't know if we can lead in with that. You want to leave the bit at the beginning in before the song, but you wanted to start with the song. I mean, that was assuming that I could perfect the song. But, but no I, one knows the song's not perfected because people only know your version of it from how you played it. Yeah, but what if we got some people that are, you know... Huge Pink Floyd fans? Or just like normal Pink Floyd fans. I'm going to get I'm gonna get oh, roasted. So you, you think even the normal fans are going to come down on you? They're going to come down on me. I don't know how you can be you and be this gun shy about what people are going to think about you. I yeah. get shy when I'm playing the guitar. I don't That's, get shy on stage, vulnerable. but it's vulnerable. I, get, I get a little nervous when I'm playing the guitar. It's fair, dude. It's vulnerable. I think if you get roasted, that's good, though. Yeah, yeah take the roast. that's good. And you love getting roasted, and then you roast back. Yeah. That's like part of your charm. Yeah. yeah. Is that part of my charm? Sure. Yeah. You getting roasted would be way better than... Just no comments at all. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You want you want to rile people up. This is a show, baby. You want to have an effect. Yeah. You either want people to be like, "Wow, Kevin is amazing," or "Wow, he blows." Yeah. You don't want the middle. I'm sorry, uh, JT. I'm not making too much eye contact with you because Chad's shirt is so loud. Thank oh, that's you. okay. Are you peacocking? Is I'm this trying peacocking? to be more loud with my shirts. Is he peacocking? Yeah. You're peacocking. Yeah. Right. yeah. I. It, it depends, right? 
Emphasis Cause, on cause the he's a, He is a tropical peacock. Is by that a nature. Hawaiian shirt? Can you peacock if you are born a peacock? Ooh. Because I think Chad's just naturally a peacock. So I don't, it's not peacocking. Right yeah, kind of. My understanding is that peacocking is a, you have to specifically, you have to intend. I read the to game. Do, yeah, I, I was gifted the game. You, met, you mean that by God? people know that book? No, by a dude. What did you say, by God? Why is Aaron laughing? I don't know that if that's funny. Is that a, is that a burn? Are you burning me again? <laughs> no, it's literally the opposite. Oh, so you're complimenting me. I don't take compliments well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I assume everything's a burn. Dude, I don't know, but I'm on my heels now. No, um, a, a guy friend gifted me the game. That's an insult, right? Like, you're going to need this book. Yeah. yeah, probably. But you know, at that point, I think when you're in high school, did you get into high school, right? It wasn't after the fact? No, I got it in college. Yeah, that's a little bit of an insult. Because in high school, everyone's kind of accepting that, like, we don't have game and we want game. So it was actually kind of like... It, it wasn't weird to give it to your buddies. It was more like, hey, man, I got the... But, it, it's like getting uh, the cheat codes to a video game. It's like, here, let me share it with you. I was op But I was openly didn't have game. I wasn't ashamed of that. But the problem is, great book. Have you guys discussed this book? Do people, do you, people don't know what this book we is anymore. We had it anymore. on the table at one point. Great book. The, the suggestions were a little off because it was like, okay, you got to peacock. You got to neg the girls and all that. Where I'm, okay, I'm on board. I'm on board. And then step number three, now do a magic trick. That was the crazy part. So really? I always that, have to. What if I like? Yeah, it's that's in there. You always mm -hmm. have to do magic. Okay. And, really? and so, so to to be able to have the stuff for a magic trick, you had to wear a fanny pack. So built into rule three was also. Oh, I don't a fanny even remember pack. that. Is this for real? Yeah, yeah you got because to you do, do your magic. magic trick, you need like you need cards. You need and shit? stuff. You need shit. But it's a great book. Wow. So like when you go to the club, you're wearing tight jeans and like you know a, yeah. a banana republic. There's no like room a, for magic. Like a top hat and shit too. Right? And and they wouldn't let you into like a club with. I think they were going to sleep like not great places. Yeah. Because like you can't go to like a great. No, they're going to the den. I think they were living in a house like right above the comedy store, the and they were going to the den. And doing magic tricks. I think. Yeah, Mark Hayes is one of the guys in the book. He's in the book. Yeah. He's in the book. We didn't know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's as a guy just hanging out at the den. He's Mark Hayes. Yeah. Mark he's, Hayes is a, a comic we know that. Um, he's done magic on you. Right? Slings dick. He slings dick. He's done uh, magic on you, right? No, he does magic. Oh well, yeah. yeah, but it's without the the stuff. Oh. I he can do, is magic. I can do one magic card. You'll trick, guess what but... number you're thinking. Right off the bat. Hey, really? I think mm -hmm. you're thinking of the number seven. <laughs> Marquez Why'd Mexican? you do a Mexican accent? Yeah. <laughs> That's what came Is out. What, hey, Kev, ladies, I think your name is number seven. Kev, when did you get laid? He's Irish for the first time. When did I get laid? Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was late. I was uh, 21. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Who was she? J uh, just a random, uh, I, I met her at... Just a one-off. A one-off. Did you do magic and, for And her? at the time, she was old. At the time, I thought... She was much older. Now she's younger than I am now. But how old was she? I think so. In the morning, I woke up and I saw her. Uh, like her ID was on the couch, and I uh, uh, I picked it up. I look. I think she was like thirty three or thirty four. And I was that's oh, cool. Oh, fuck get out of milf, dude. But uh, <laughs> how'd you do? Really? Did you bust early? Wait, can we stop though? But can you look at me? I don't know if you can hear it on the phone, but I'm a, I have a really intense podcast stance right now. Do you guys like this? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, have a magic mind. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, we're sponsored by these guys, and they they, they make this drink that makes your brain like state of the art. Is it gonna yeah. help me bust? So what do you do? Like this is like putting, I was gonna say premium gas into a Tesla, but oh, is this an ad? Run on electric, so maybe it is like that. Do more, stress less. What matcha? It gives matcha adaptogens. So it's, it's an alternative to caffeine. What is this? Uh, the Joe Rogan experience? They're paying us. Oh okay. It's a uh, nootropic. It's gonna make your brain nootropics. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then it's going to give you an alternative an to caffeine so you don't get the jitters. And am I supposed to drink this right now? If you yeah. want to, but it'll be good for us. Okay. It's got vitamin D and vitamin C. Now, am I supposed to chug it like a shot, or am I supposed to just sip it and enjoy the Whichever taste? Whichever you prefer. All right. So when did you get your first girlfriend? Uh, you know, I had, I think my current wife was my actual first girlfriend. I had, like, things that I wouldn't say we're fully committed. I also, I got to say something now too, because the way you made that sound, it's going to sound like you weren't a man about town, but I had a kick in 4th of July party one time. Kevin rolls through. Two of my super cute friends who were real chill girls oh, were yeah. battling over They were him. fighting really? over They were fighting, like literally arguing about who had divs on Kev. Yeah, but that was, that was, the, that was very confusing. 
I mean, uh, clearly these girls just met me for the first time because this has never Both happened. Both lovely ladies. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Very nice girls, cool girls. Yeah. And they were like, Kevin's mine. And the other one was like, Kevin's mine. I've but never I, seen them fight like that. I didn't really? I didn't know. I, I didn't mean, they know were that. bridesmaids. At e I mean, they're married now, but they were bridesmaids at each other's wedding. Wow. But I heard then that you throw later. Kevin in the, no, they, they weren't married at the time. And then you throw Kevin no. into the mix, and it's like the claws were out, dude. I didn't witness any fighting. And so I, I didn't I didn't like notice anything or know of anything until I think you told me later. But I, I don't think they'd ever seen a guy wear two bowling shirts. <laughs> Why does Aaron only laugh at you? I don't get I don't get your jokes. <laughs> two bowling shirts. Is that funny? Yeah. Was I wearing a bowling shirt? I don't know. I look, man. I'm just here to hang out, dude. That was a. I got no problem with you. We had a. Um, was that too much intense energy? No, you're you good. You're good. It's fun. It's fun. You know, I'm trying to get you back in the real world here. Energy is good energy. Hell yeah, man. Bring me back. How's your baby? They're good, man. They're so cute. I love them to death. Oh, it's wait. so fun. Before we get into your babies, you want me to try this first? Yeah, man. Drink it. Ugh. That's delicious. Somebody find me a, a woman so I can bust. Nice. Magic mind. Cut it. Cut that clip, Jake. See, Kevin, we were at a mic last week, and uh, how's your bust game? Dude, I'm... Because you were talking about busting a lot. I can't believe you still do. You're like too... I think you... Like, I, this, this is me complimenting myself because I know we do a lot of things together, but I think you might be too famous. To do open to mic. do open mics? Oh, yeah, you, you haven't Damn. been you haven't been to the open mics that we're doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> there, there's no fame bump there. No one's laughing. Well, nobody's. Are are people like when when you go up, they're not going. Oh my God, is that? Are they? No, it's. Yeah. I don't, and, and I don't mean it as an insult because it's really a testament to your work ethic and to oh, yeah. like drive to like keep doing things and to keep getting better. But like you'll be doing shows with like, you know, right. Bill Burr at night, and then and then you're still. Smacking, working on it, smacking around it. The fourth keeps him humble. It. Do you just like the vibe there, the hang? I like the hang. I like I like work on new material. That's nice. Yeah, it is a good place for that, right? Where it's not gonna like. Uh... Well, and it and it's if if a joke works there. I mean, I know there's the there's the argument that, <clears throat> you know, no one laughs, so it's more detrimental. But I think if you get people laughing at a joke there, then it's pretty tried and true. You know, it's a jewel. Yeah, yeah. it is true. Wait, so what happened? Now I have to be there. Because I don't get booked that much, so if I if I don't do these, then I, I sort of feel like I, I'm sort of off the thing. So I'm I'm there, I'm there just to feel alive. Staying regimented. Wait, yeah. which one are you guys hitting? Fourth wall. Fourth wall. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the only one. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go around town. I'm just. What's well, a different scene there. now? It's different. Yeah, it's than all when we can. It's different. different. Yeah. 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 The world changed. Not, not, not always for the hanging. better. But we, uh, you're talking about busting. Oh, I'm still in the bus position. I haven't busted yet today, but there's always time. How many times do you bust in a day? Although my mom's uh, at our house right now, so I don't try oh, to that's bust. Nice. Your mom's I don't try, in town? Yeah, I don't try to bust when my mom and my baby are the next room over. Is she there right. to visit Harrison Fard? Yeah, that might be his name. Might not. I think you've said his podcast, his name on the podcast. Whose name? Harrison Fard. Uh, might buy that. You know, you know, your audience is uh, quite gullible. You know when we did. Uh, we did some shows. Wait, don't do this because they are gullible, but they're they, they're, Dude, they're. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. We did yeah. some shows, okay? Yeah. I have a bit, like it's like a twelve minute bit about my uh, son's cock, okay? Just twelve minutes of cock, pure cock material. <laughs> and after the show, I get that, that should that should be the name of your special minutes. Moment. I could go on probably. You, it, it, I have a I have a long twelve minutes. I have a long bit about his cock. Kevin, that should be the name of your special, Pure Cock Material. Pure Cock Material. I don't my, think, my, like... My material's not all cock, but most of my my, most of my baby material is about his cock. I don't know what that says about me, but... Right, right. I do extensive amounts of material about my little baby's cock, okay? And I get off stage, and a couple of your fans come up <laughs> next to me, and they're all... S so, like, do you really have a son, or, like, is that... Is that like a bit? Like, is he is he like made I know, up? I know it's weird, but yeah. it's really weird because if I you're saying I made up, I made up a kid, <laughs> and then made and up, then yeah, only did cock material about the kid about a made up kid. That How fucked exist. up do you think I am? Just, right. uh, I'm just focusing on his only cock. Slightly more fucked up than you actually are. It it could be described as fucked up right now, but, but. I get what you mean. That is so much weirder though to be like, okay. 
I'm going to pretend I have a son and then do 12 minutes on his pretend dick. Yeah. That is crazy. But they think the same thing about, they don't think Strider's wife is real. Yeah. And they don't think your son's name is Harrison Fard. They well, think that's a bit for the podcast. It's a pretty good bit, isn't it? Pretty good bit. I'm pretty good at bits. Also good at busting. Huh? Or is that a bit? Yeah. Could be. I could be really it's poor at busting. It's hard for you to say that's a bit that you bust. Uh, I bust. Do you make cock jokes when you're in bed with your wife? I make cock jokes, jokes all day long, 24-7. Well, yeah, say the thing that you whisper to your wife sometimes when you guys are making whoopee. Don't you go like, ugh. I, I, sometimes I like to go like, you know, okay, so can we, yeah, can let's somebody, do it, let's be, do somebody be Stephanie? Who yeah, wants to be whoever Stephanie? Whoever wants to. Okay. Uh, oh, Kevin. No, she doesn't do that. Okay. She completely. Just you have to be completely silent like you're not enjoying it, okay? And this is not a dig at my wife. I've been actually trying to work on this. Like, this is not a dig at. I don't think anyone's taking it that way, brother. Keep like cooking. Like most women that I've been with, completely yeah. silent, not having fun yeah, at all. Yeah, you've never made a woman moan, right? That's yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm working. I'm working on this, but it's true. I I've never had like a screamer, you know. <laughs> ah, ah, ooh, Kevin, ooh, daddy, nothing. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that though. But I you know why? Be. A lot of that when women do that is is that they're feeling pleasure. Yeah, no woman has been <laughs> feeling pleasure for me. Oh, 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 the Small Cock Brothers are going to be uh, lecturing me on pleasure. Hey, that's not a bad name, the you Small know. Cock Brothers. That's not bad. Never had I can a, see that on a marquee. I have never had a woman excited. Like, now, and the, the fucked up thing about it is I've never even had a woman that maybe she hasn't been excited that hasn't even decided that she needs to fake it for me to gain my approval. Right. But a lot of women... I think just don't they're very shy mm -hmm. they don't want uh, to do that thing. so it's a trust thing I'm saying there's either two options and I'm comfortable with both one I don't have the goods to give a woman to like truly satisfy a woman that's very possible okay that's very possible or I'm just getting very respectable women who don't are secure they don't need to moan or do all that they're feeling the pleasure inside of them and they don't need my I, approval I, I genuinely think it's the latter thank you do you think it could be also that you're so you're such an alpha you're so dominant yeah in bed, that they think if they moan you'll mock them I, I do think that's part of it too yeah well because you would what, you think I would mock them for moaning yeah because I can moan better <laughs> I didn't know that's why, but I, I figured you'd have some kind of super stupid. Here, reason. okay, get. <laughs> wait, wait, can you do your moan? Yeah, do, but do what, your moan for a second. What, your you're my woman right now. What's your position? What position are we in? A missionary. Oh wait, shouldn't I be the woman? Shouldn't you be banging me? Wait. Okay, you bang me because I'm moaning. Oh, that's right, 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 right. That's a good point. I thought wait, we were, I thought I was gonna be your wife so for a second. Had no, we're to take away my wife. It's just me and you. Okay. You remember that dark mirror? Um, <laughs> that dark mirror. Is it dark mirror? Black mirror. Black mirror. It's uh, close. It close. The episode where the two guys are playing video yeah, games the, the and then they started or they started like fucking that. each other. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's. It's kind of hard to. Yeah. Do you want me in missionary? Yeah. Do you want my hand? Do you want me to be full on? What do you call it? Starfish? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, take it, Kevin. Oh, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like that? Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh. Ah, oh, ah, 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 oh, my, ah, 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 all right, do you so like you that? Want, do you want to do you need a cigarette? How you do it with your wife? You need a cigarette? I think we all need to take. I, yeah. Before we do that, let's take five seconds. I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. Are you tired? I, I feel like something happened. Yeah, let's take it. Let's take five I take seconds. A drink? Yeah, yeah. Let's just relax. Actually, people listen to this at work. You know what? The best thing, uh, <laughs> yeah, the best they're, thing to take after a, boning. They're getting an experience for sure. <laughs> what I like to take after I have somebody bust a load all over me is Magic Mind. Dude, hell yeah. That's yeah, we could we could cut sweet. that where you take half a shot of Magic Mind and then just cut to him moaning. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, I can feel those nootropics in my balls. Kevin, that was really good. Thank you. Like, you were transported. It was, I don't know if I'd say it was like Daniel Day-Lewis, but it was like commitment was fucking gigantic. Thank you. I don't know. It just naturally Have came to me. Have you done that for women you are, like, 
intimate with like no. that, you, that you like hook up oh, with. Oh, but I've th so I I've had two th two thoughts on this. The first one was I thought it would be hilarious. Wouldn't it be hilarious if you're just hooking up with a girl for the first time? Like you never so it's like a one night stand, mm -hmm. and you're in her completely normal, completely normal, and right when you're about to bust, you start doing like, oh, and she can't do anything at that point because you're mid bust. Yeah, my brother, you're busting. My brother used to say, my brother used to want to do a bit, like I guess that's like a sex bit. Yeah. My brother wanted to do a sex bit. Where you know in like pornos where they do the really exaggerated squirting or yeah. whatever. My brother wanted to do something where he's like making out good hands with the girl. And his pants come down and they're dry up and he goes, wait, 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 hold on. He goes, and then he wanted to aggressively rub a pretend clay and go get a squirt and go, ah! Like he had a pussy? Like he had a pussy and <laughs> pretend to squirt everywhere. And uh, yeah, so I get it. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, I think that's funny. I do. I lost my train of thought because I'm thinking your brother with a fake clit. Let's see. Did he ever do oh. it? No, no, no. Where would you get that? Would you have to decided, order that on Amazon? You know, I think that's one of those things where every time you're like, "Would this be funny?" Yeah. And then you're actually like making out with someone. You're like, this "Poor girl." Yeah. <laughs> like, you're like I don't think I'm gonna, you know, yeah. pretend that I have a clit. The it's, it's, everywhere. It's, it's funny. Yeah, like theory. you talk to her for three hours. You learned yeah. about her major. You know, her background, yeah. her family, and then and then yeah, you got to do it. And he did it a bunch. Yeah, Girls yeah, don't. Good. He did it a lot. That's good. Girls. Now I'm not gonna overgeneralize here because I don't speak for all women. But well, people I, are taking it serious. I don't think they. I don't think they like bits during sex. No, yeah, I don't yeah, think so. I, with my, if it's with, early on, yeah. Especially. With my wife, I like to make like a, oh, yeah, mm, like that before we start. And she cuts it off. Yeah. She doesn't let me. I thought it's like, isn't it sexy, man? Mm, yeah. Mm. And you like go up to her ear and go, oh, fuck. Like I thought that could bring it up. But she just cuts it off. So right. is she still in the mood after you do that? She's not in the mood to begin with. And that really drops off the mood. Have you ever tried just going straight sexy Kev? Huh? No bits. Sexy Kev, no bits. Yeah, I try that. And she gets fucking weirded out by that, too. Because, well, like, why are you all like? sexy? Well, what's that look like? It I'm looks fake. Good. We'll do it. You look so beautiful tonight. <laughs> I love Dude, you. Dude, it's good. But <laughs> it's good, but your eyes are... Can, can you look at the... Can we get his eyes on camera when he says it? Should I wait? Which yeah, camera? That, that that one? One? Yeah, 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 right down the barrel. Mmm, you are so beautiful. I love you more than anything in the world. Kiss me, please. Can we just kiss? Can we just snuggle for a little bit? You're a weird guy, man. I'm gonna yeah. give you a Some massage. wires got tripped up in you early, huh? I'm fucked up. But you had like a very, you had like a very normal life, right? right? You're like a normal guy. Yeah, we're weird. I'm a weirdo, though. Some people are just weird. My dad was weird. A lot of Persian guys are weird. Your dad was weird? Yeah. How so? He was more like... You know, he would he would like do like corny stuff, but like he would yeah. My dad was a weirdo. He um like he would walk around the gro his favorite thing was to hang out in grocery stores. Just like he would walk around the grocery store. I get that. Store. I like going to the grocery store. Yeah. And then he would he'd be like one of those guys who when he's checking out he'd he'd be like, "Is this free?" And then he'd wink at the the cashier for like nine minutes. Is this free? And then that, that kind of stuff. Like dad jokes. Yeah, dad joke. But he was weird. But uh, Persian guys are weird. I'm going to generalize over. I'm not going to overgeneralize here. Most Persian guys are fucking weirdos. I, who, who do I know? You, Amir. Is it, would you consider him to be normal? I don't think, but I don't think both of y'all are weird. Both weird are, in a different way. You guys are different dudes. Yeah. And different than the norm. But I, I would think that's more because of, not because you're Persianist, but because you went into the... In a comedy. I've been weird my whole fucking life. So a lot of people I see go into comedy and they're, you know, sort of normal people and they're trying to do like a math equation. I've been weird. Mm. And I'm just being weird. Do you, do you have a, do you, I don't, I don't think you do, but so when one of those like good college normies come into stand up and they're like really trying to like be studious about it, does that, do you want to like, like moan in their ear? No, I just, uh. And this it's is a different an, style. This isn't an, an insult to comedians, and I, I certainly shouldn't be insulting comedians, you know. So I think there's just sort of two types of comedians. There are comedians that are just, I, I, I'm not going to call myself funny, but weird, just weird people, and weird or funny that are just naturally like that. They've been that their whole life. And then there's the 
nerds that come in and f figure it out like the mathematical formula. And then there's the nerds that are secretly funny and then do that. They're, those people are the yeah. best. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the people who can get 4.0s but are also weirdos. But that's a. And I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying one is better than the other. And obviously, a lot of the other find a way to become successful. But I'm just a fucking weirdo. And whether I'm going to fail eventually at this or not um, is not, I'm still the weirdo. I think you're just coming into your prime. I think you're lighting it up tonight. Is this it? This mm -hmm. is your prime. This is your peak. Knock on wood. I thought you were going to say your dad would pretend to bust all over the produce. No, he didn't. Maybe he wanted to. Yeah. He he wasn't. Um, Those are different times. I, I, yeah. well, I also have to say, I, I, when he was describing his father's antics, yeah. I, it, it, it clicked? If I was con no, if I was connecting the dots, yeah. they were far afield. But I think it's right. a... It's, it's a I like think his dad made a joke. Yeah. And... Kevin's I, Kevin. Kevin's jacking off in one of the aisles. Yeah, I, was like, I was like, one is not like the other. I think there is a genetic component to it, though. Because my sister also... Well, yeah, maybe your dad was your... Oh, man. Yeah, I just got a fucking spiky headache. But was your dad doing it... He was he, he. He wasn't in your face like I am. We're a different kind of weird. You're, yeah, you're a brutalist. I'm a. I'm intense. What's I'm intense I'm gonna too. make you. That's what connects us. I'm gonna I'm make. Very intense. I'm gonna make you uncomfortable, and see, see where your line is. And then I, I'm not gonna open up because if 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 I get intense with you and I come up to you and I just make like a, I'm not gonna come up to you. But if if I just make a a, a joke, off color joke, and I see you get all. Tense. Like tense. That's what I do with my friends' girlfriends. I call it the the, the the test. I just be weird in front of them, and if they got all tensed up, or no, 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 you need the girl that's chill, and she's gonna, you know. What's your sister like? My sister is very. It's a lot of uh. She likes she likes load humor too. Whoa! Oh, she does. Some, if you're just hanging out, my sister's gonna be funnier than me. She's gonna drop loads on you, huh? She's gonna drop loads. She likes to talk about cock loads, all that kind of stuff. Whoa! So do you yeah, kinda, think it's genetic? Do you feel like she was talking about it so much growing up that you didn't feel like you got no. your opportunity? No, I think we both. Did she bogart the load she, talk? She did not talk about loads when we were growing up. Mm. I think we both just came into our loads separately, but I think it's genetic. Who likes loads more? That's a good question. I think you would have to do like a load off or a test or a quiz. Oh, right. That'd be a good segment. Yeah. A load off. Like those space bar things they used to do in high school to see if you're racist. Yeah. But my family, we like cock talk. Not my mom. My mom doesn't have... And so that's why I think it's... My dad was weird. I'm weird. My sister's weird. But my mom doesn't have that gene. Right. But, it, but it's a dominant gene. Your dad had the big yeah, karyotype on it. Yeah, I think it, it just... Uh, it, it dominated your mom's like blue eye recessive shit. Yeah. He basically had a load load, which is a load that's obsessed with loads. And you'll, you'll do it in front of every, anyone. Like at, at the show in Sacramento, you were asking to see who would blow my dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, no, I'm trying to, in my mind, I'm trying to think about it. Yeah, what happened there? Kevin, oh, okay. Kevin like, short-circuited. <laughs> I was trying to so, go back to it. So, <laughs> your dad was there. Pissed off, dude. Your dad Why was there, so and mad? then your... Oh, no, 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 no. I was trying to go back to oh, it. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm trying to remember it. Yeah. Your dad was there, and then your principal was there or something? Yeah. Okay. And my preschool teacher. But your dad. They all turned out. Dad's a doctor, single man, just sitting no. in there. No. Not single? No. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't have that information. Was he there? You know. His wife wasn't there, though. I think it's a I think it's a valid question. You know, people want to know who's going to suck off your dad. Yeah. I did talk to my stepdad, too. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't... I wasn't opposed to it. My stepdad was there. I asked him how many times he uh, wax off in a week, and he answered. That's interesting. So is your stepdad into the load talk? I mean, no. He's not a load guy, but he'll take it. So is your mom... Is your mom... <laughs> <laughs> is, is do you think your mom's attracted to a type though? No, no, because my stepdad is different than my normal dad. I, I okay, so uh, sorry. Here's a scenario. Let's say your stepdad <clears throat> is with your mom in the house. You're visiting, and you and your sister are upstairs, and you're doing a load talk, and you're yeah. fake busting on. You're like, uh, uh. now is your mom like to your stepdad? Kevin's busting a load on his sister right now. What? No. 
And let me clarify. <laughs> what? My sister's more Dude, cock centered, that not normal? load. <laughs> that sounded. That was crazy. What? So were you imagining me like fake busting on my fake sister? Fake busting. No, we who don't do. Who says that about who? So my mom. It, it, so his mom is like explaining what's happening to her stepdad. So he's like. Kevin is fake busting a load on his sister right now. Oh, okay. yeah, that one was a little confusing, but no, no, the but the, no. the fake part's critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, not not for real busting. Right. No, <laughs> I think we you can... said fake the first time, right? No, I didn't. Oh, you meant real busting? No, no, but I meant fake. No, no, we. But we, it's so clarify, powerful. We don't go up into a room and fake bust. <laughs> We, it's all out in the open. It's theater. In the it's family theater. room. It's, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's, oh, it's this, isn't, the... this isn't a secret. Hey, you want to hear a crazy thing like that, dude? I guess my brother was kissing his buddy Trevor a lot at our fantasy football thing last year. It's just 12 guys at a house. Now, hold on. And they were drunk kissing to, you know, be fun. Oh, okay. And then, and then uh, I go, I don't know where my brother learned that from. Uh, it wasn't from watching me and my buddy Andrew kiss, even when no one was around. Yeah. Making a joke. Mm. Yeah. Then my buddy Joe goes, one of my favorite memories, I was at ASU, and I was introducing my buddies from Philly to the boys from back home, and they looked over, and Andrew and JT were kissing. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Is that it? So you think that's a Jeanette? Did you ask your dad if he kissed yeah. other? No, I don't think so. I think it's a, uh, you know what I Why think Why did you is? just go into a New York accent there? Because I'm into it. Here's oh. the thing. I think it's a, you know what it was? Is when I saw the porn it made me realize everybody's a little bit of everything. So I'm not gonna go out into the world and pretend to be one thing, even if I'm not the other thing, I'm just gonna be all things, because we all are. Mm. Interesting. But what's the real reason? You no, I swear to God, that's part? it. Okay. I swear to God, that's it. Because I haven't really done it since. Okay. So for me, it's like, it's like a bygone era. But do you only kiss your friends that you think are hot? Would you kiss an ugly friend? I'm attracted to all my friends. I think they're all hot. Oh, yeah? I wouldn't be friends with them if I didn't think they were hot. Would you kiss Joe? Yes. I've tried several times. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not. It's uh, not his style, but that's what cracks uh, me up about the guy. Uh, and he, oh, don't you dare try to kiss this guy. No. You don't want to you be You know kissed? what? You guys have lost a lot of energy since I started talking about kissing guys. <laughs> no, I'm listening. You lost a lot of energy, especially I'm, this I'm, one right I'm, here. I'm just thinking about he it. He shuts down. We want to let... And, and actually, now that we're on this... This is good to talk about. You guys both got mad at me when we were shooting the Netflix show because when we were humping on Catalina, you guys both talked to the director and said I was humping wrong. We didn't tell on you. Wait, we told yeah, you. and then the director had to pull me aside and be like, uh, mate, mate. Yeah, but I, I think mean, that's an it. I don't think the we fellas, The fellas say you're not humping right. Well, and I had was, to be like, oh, really? <laughs> well, it was a little bit aggressive. Like, you were really giving it to the But I have a different style. No, it wasn't aggressive. It was it was weird. It was like... It, it was, was intense intimate. and real. Was it was yeah. real. Intimate. Because I don't was, fake it. Because yeah. I never fake it. You never fake it with a seal? No. When I hump, I hump for real. That's what makes me hump all the... Because if, if I hump fake then, I might hump fake when it matters. Let me tell you something about seals, okay? And old Ben specifically. Go, baby. He wants it hard. He doesn't want this sensual bullshit. You don't bullshit. know that. You don't know. If I don't he wants know the, that. You don't Chad? know if he wants the same thing. Bro. I mean, it, it, pulling the Chad card on me. You don't I think mean, I know it, what it, old it, Ben wants? It, it on transported me? me to a not so cool place. Yeah, that just happened when I was talking about kissing my bro. This guy. I mean, because you know, we were just we were we were busting loads on yeah, the seal. Yeah, you got to bust there, on. And you get in there and you're like, yeah, you fucking. I'm just saying, you know, for these to be wild and crazy guys, you guys have like a narrow like tolerance. Old Ben was a prankster. You got it. You guys, it's like you know, if I don't hump or kiss dudes the way you guys think is the way to do it, all of a sudden I'm peeing in the Cheerios. Yeah. Well, we felt like we were we were in the room with you with like a chick and you were being intimate yeah that's we how were, i pretend home so if we were in a threesome did you, I mean, you the, would just be all sensual like that i would hope so actually that wasn't a good uh yeah, yeah. Was, is that bad because, even yeah, yeah that wasn't I, a good hypothetical. A bad, okay. but is that even bad i'm saying when we're when we're filming three way fucking a seal, seal three weighing the seal three weighing the seal even a guy came off the street and he was just actually he got like nervous, but at the beginning he was like raw dogging the seal. Oh, but it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't my fault that guy wanted to bail. No, he got ner he didn't get nervous because of you. Yeah, he got nervous. I think he, he got camera shy. He got camera shy. If you guys don't know what we're talking about when we we're filming, if anybody even does anybody even care I about I think the, the people show? who listen to the podcast okay. watch the show, yeah. So we were filming, so we were um, three weighing old Ben, which is the seal. And there was this guy with his shirt off, this like, but like just buff guy, 
like the son of Catalina. He he was basically he was, a dude. He was he like those, there. like a local yeah. ledge. Yeah. And talk about peacocking. This guy wants to be a part of everything. You could tell he was just one of those guys. So when he saw cameras, he's all, "Oh, I want to get on." He was finding a way to like get on the show, even though he doesn't know what it is. And so he's all, oh, "Okay, like, like, what should I do?" And we were fucking the seal. So he said, "Hey, man, come up. We'll just film it because we we're filming it live, right?" And we'll just come and join in. Mm -hmm. and, and we're all, we're all. He didn't. I don't think he knew like exactly what we're doing. We're all okay. Fuck the seal. And he, he sort of started. And then didn't he sort of like just get really nervous and shy? He got he got scared. And then he, he he was cool about it, but he's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, I think <laughs> yeah. he realized that he would be humping on TV. And he got I, three pumps in. He he pumped funny too. I think we kept his little nugget. In yeah, there, but, you, but you, that, that's the key: pumping funny. Yeah, pumping. Funny. Well, that's the key for you. It's, I, I mean, think I, it's funny <laughs> that I pump serious. <laughs> and I think you got to pump funny. I think it's funny to pump serious. But can you demonstrate your yeah, pumping? Yeah, I didn't want to because the people are listening to this and uh, watching we, it. We got to find like a seal. All right, watch. Okay, Jack. these two these two guys, can I can I make fun of how you guys hump yeah, for a second? Yeah, yeah. These guys come in. It's all it's 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 all Tom Fuller. It's ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I know Kevin doesn't agree with me that that's how they hump. That's my best approximation. I do make good seal noises, but I don't make seal noises when I'm humping the seal. All right, I'm sorry. That was my best that was the best I could do. <laughs> all right. When I hump, when I hump, I go like this. I go Oh fuck, that feels good. Yeah, dude. Already instantly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, instantly dude, fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> you know That's this is a comedy. This is oh, a comedy show. <laughs> is this how we haven't heard from Netflix? I say, but here's the thing. It's funny that I make you guys react. That's funny. Yeah, but you can't it doesn't capture on camera. I think it came through nice. But I did, liked it. It didn't show like an argument And I'll us. tell you this, he might have just been pacifying me because he didn't want me to be a grump grump, but our very esteemed director was like, I, I think it's funny when JT humps serious. He has a different hump style. <laughs> and maybe it's, maybe it's a British thing. Maybe I hump British. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I'm just, me and Chad are the one, like, I, look, I don't like bumming Chad out. Like when I see no, his he, shoulders he, droop, you know, it makes me bum. I'm, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm not bummed. I'm not bummed. I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking about different pump styles, different hump styles. Chad, it's okay to different ways to bust. It's okay to put your foot down. Now, th this wasn't like you guys were in the writers' room scripting yeah, out. Kevin's uh, yeah, but gonna it's also, get everybody it's to also okay. Seal. I, I totally agree. It's okay to put your foot down. I don't think the humping thing is the time to put your foot down on the hump. I mean, but you take the artistry of humping. You, you feel like it's one thing. When we saw old Ben for the first time, we pictured ourselves on him. Like, this is how it's going to be. Um, it wasn't written down. It, it was just natural. Look, I'm, sorry, natural for, I'm connection. sorry for that. If I, if I you know, kind of no. threw off the hump on old Ben and that was like a, a pinnacle moment, I'm serious. No, what you yeah. didn't throw us, it, it, that's okay. It was fine on film and we're not criticizing you there, but it just the, just the basic discussion I don't think you're What about correct. when I threw up the serious mangina up on the hillside? The mangina oh, that was, was beautiful. The mangina was not only um, a good move; it was an epic move. Because remember, we were all like, "We should, <laughs> we should moon." And I thought this is going to be stupid if we all moon like the thing. And then, yeah, it's low stakes. If and it's then a JT's moon. all, "No, no, no, no." What if I mangina? And you know, right? And then it. I was serious about the mangina, and it's that same energy that allows me to mangina with that kind of, you know. Uh, Intensity and that kind of courage. That's the same thing that lets that that makes me hump the way I hump It's all part of the same thing man. Is it? It's Draymond Green. What do you think Chad? I think I felt different energies. I got to be honest during your mangina, right? But what I'm saying is look there's eight guys in the Eagles Everybody plays their instrument. Remember when different. we did the mangina and then we were like <laughs> We were eating dinner that night like after we filmed <laughs> so and we're eating dinner <laughs> and we're, looking, we're all this is gonna like this is gonna revolutionize TV. Well, like, well, well, yeah. well you're, you're, yeah, that was, that was, yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted, I wanted the credits to be, you know, it goes, doo doo, Netflix, and then it comes, opening scene is just your mangina. I think that would have been powerful. I was, was honestly expecting that to be an actual, like, if you go to Catalina right now, yeah, it would be a on statue. The, no, no, it would be on, you know, when you're buying, uh, what do you call them? The postcards or whatever. Yeah, I I thought okay, a, this a luau, is gonna, a, you're getting your wiki whacked. Like what well, I like hi from Catalina and. Well, you've been turning know. to Chad for reinforcement on your side of things. I'd like to go to an outside voice. We should call Dan. Aaron. Oh yeah, we should call Dan. Aaron, how do you fuck seals? I mean, if I'm doing it, 
I'm doing it funny. And can you demonstrate? Oh, wait, let's uh, say that again. If you're doing it, you're doing it funny. So what's not funny? What style would not be funny to you? Probably too serious. Hmm. Okay, so can you give us like some Hey, look, some Aaron, if that's how you feel, I'll take the L on it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, Aaron, you think it's better if I I'm hump not like an expert th on this the way that you guys are, though? Well, Aaron, can you give us? Can you fake hump for us, and we can just yeah, hear can it? You, can we hear it? Nah. Come on, Aaron. Nah, it's not okay. That's so, Aaron. If you were gonna hump, wouldn't you hump true to yourself? Whatever that is, whether it be funny, whether it be real. Of but it would be it would be funny. But you're not doing it now. No. Have you ever? Well, uh, I mean, you got it. You might. You got. I mean, you. <laughs> let's say. Let's say you, you win the softball championship. This. Look, I, and you hump the trophy. Ooh. All right. Now we're talking. All right. Picture that and hump the trophy. Yeah. Uh huh. Woo. And he's just being shy, though. But that's that not, was that's not being that you. wasn't far from me. Yeah, but that's because he's being shy. He doesn't. He's not an impro. He's a improver. shy humper. I like it. I thought there was something. You, okay, so here's let me here's no, no, my no, thing. Let me ask. Let me ask. Aaron, when you're pumping your wife, are you shy or Easy, are you? Are, dude. Well, Aaron, did I offend you there? He's off no. camera. Aaron, when you bust, are you a loud buster? Are you a confident buster? Or are you shy buster? I'm pretty shy. Okay. Oh, interesting. So here's my thing. Here's my thing. And this is real. And this is part of what I think makes the whole this is what compels me in a lot of this stuff. Now, while Aaron's hump there might not have been hilarious, it gave a new note to all of this humping. I heard Aaron in that hump. And that's what I'm drawn to is authenticity. Mm. So when I see you guys hump, I know it's authentic to you. When I see myself hump, I know it's authentic to me. When I heard Aaron be shy there during his hump, I heard Aaron, and that's what I want to hear in a hump, is I want to hear you. I want to hear the notes that you play. Well, uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me just pull up a scenario for you. Let's say you're with your boys, you're in the football locker room, and you know how, like... I hump you, serious. So, so, you know, like, guys in the show, they'd be like, Ugh, Ugh. to, like, their friends. Yeah. yeah. So you go up to, like, one of your buddies, and you'll be like, fuck, that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. actually is funny. So. Yeah, thank you. No, yeah, it's, thank but, but, you. But, no, but it's that, funny in a subversive. No, 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 no. Thank yeah, yeah. you, dude. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, but if that's, if your intent, no, no, no. And, dude, I got plenty yeah, of evidence yeah. to back up. No, no, the 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 hold on. Yeah, yeah. If, if your intent when you're doing that is to be, like, funny, like, subvert, like everybody's yeah, of going, course. Oh. But you're not saying that. You're saying this is how you truly feel. You're not doing it to That's what makes it funny. Is that I do it like yeah. it actually feels so everyone's like so then there's that level to it where people go he might not be joking and that's what makes but it so provocative. Do you think that picked up, that, picked up on camera? I don't know, but I'm not saying that's my fault. I'm not saying it was. A, but I'm not saying it isn't my fault. I'm not oh, wait, saying let's, you can't let's do it. Let's say that again. Okay, I'm in the locker room. I'm you know I'm yeah, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ross, come here, dude. How'd you get so pretty? You know you're the prettiest girl I've ever seen. No, come on, don't be mad. Come here. Come on, just give me a taste in front of all. Why do you sound like Sylvester Stallone? I don't know. I'm just doing. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Or look, 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 look. Yeah, just like, just like. All right, let's get to insertion. You're inserting. Insert. Okay, I will. I'm like, okay, watch. Oh, God. You're laughing. I don't know what I'm feeling, man. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I don't know what I'm feeling right now, dude. I'm not saying that. That's what I was trying to do to people. I'm not saying that can't be I want to confuse them a bit. Yeah, but you're not saying, you're not trying to confuse. You were just being like, that's how you feel passionately. You're not like pranking us by being weird and sensual. I think I am a little bit. Are you? I think but I did. Your whole speech there was, "This is how you feel. This is you." But that's now you're but pranking doing us? that as theater blurs the line between what's real, and then if they think it's real, then they all of a sudden don't know how to make heads or tails of it, and that's a new provocative feeling for them that could make them laugh harder. Can I be honest with you? No, this is all flying over my head because I'm thinking about Aaron shy busting, <laughs> <laughs> just shy and just busting. Look, we <laughs> might we might have gone. I do feel like we've gone into kind of we've gone so deep in this that we've lost, like we're so deep under the water, we don't know where the surface is, mm -hmm. and we might need to just swim to the top and pop up, because yeah. we might be in kind of a, uh, such a deep theoretical hump land that, that we've lost we're our bearings. We're in a vortex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's level out. Yeah, because, uh, wasn't this supposed to be, oh, we're doing the legal stuff on yeah, the stuff. back end, okay. But first we were, you know. Yeah. Okay, because you know, we brought you in to give legal advice to people. 
guys i'm interrupting this podcast lane once again we got irvine improv coming up september 28th get your tickets right now we're also brought to you by the new sponsor blue chew the best boner pills in the biz jt you want to bring the heat in the bedroom huh always and i think it's good to be extra hard and and then like if there's positions you don't like if you take a blue chew you like them just as much as the other ones now heck yeah it's got the same active ingredients as viagra cialis and levitra but in chewable tablets so you can chew boner tablets you can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead and be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Guys, do not go camping without a pitch tent. Make sure you get Blue Chew. Process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and say, hey, I want to get more boners. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. That's a great deal. Yeah. What do you think, Kev? I think it's fucking awesome. Yeah, Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex Better boning. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try BlueChew free when you use our promo code GODEEP at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code GODEEP to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring this podcast. All right. We're also brought to you by the legends at Rumple, guys. The best blankets in the biz. I love Rumple. Thank you guys for sponsoring the podcast. They're durable cool water stain resistant blankets uh they're made from they recycle plastic water bottles to make them so they help protect the ocean and they pack down super small they're super durable they look cool super comfy like the original puffy blanket the original yeah crazy and you know what fall is coming up winter's coming up if you want to snuggle with your gf or your bf get a rumple dude or your df or your df dog yeah. forever Oh, your dog forever. I thought you were going to say dad. Yeah, or with your dad forever. <laughs> That's not, doesn't happen enough. Hell yeah. Normalize dude. it. Go to rumple.com slash go deep to get 10% On this pod, off. we cuddle dads. We cuddle dads and go to rumple.com slash go deep to get 10% off your order. Or use code go deep at checkout. That's 10% off your first order when you head to rumple.com slash go deep and use code go deep at checkout. Guys, we're also brought to you by the legends at Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep has the best mattresses in the game. I love Helix Sleep. They offer 20 unique mattresses. I have one that's firm but also soft at the same time. It's fantastic, and I got it by using the two-minute sleep quiz that gets me the best mattress in the biz, and we want that for you guys, your personalized mattress. Everybody's unique. You want uh, models with memory foam layers. That's what I got for optimal pr uh, pressure. You want to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions, enhance cooling features, all that stuff. Just take the Helix Sleep Quiz and get one delivered to your door today. Helix Sleep is offering 20% uh, off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash go deep and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long with Helix. Better sleep starts now. Finally. We're brought to you by the legends at Liquid IV. Guys, the best hydration company in the biz. It's the number one powered hydration brand in America. Now available and sugar-free. They have so many good flavors. They have, like, green apple. Um, they have lemon lime. All that kind of stuff. Whenever I drink Liquid IV, like, three times a day, whenever I drink it, I get so hydrated. I'm like, I can do this after hot yoga, get my electrolytes back. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, those moments where you feel like you won't be able to compete if you don't have that nutritional edge that's when liquid iv comes in huge for me and those moments are not few and far between they're often in common in my day-to-day -day grind guys you heard it here first believe it real people real flavor real hydrating now sugar-free grab your liquid iv hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at costco or get 20 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code go deep at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order when you use promo code go tb at liquidiv.com all right Let's get back to the show. All right, so we stopped down. We took a couple minutes to breathe after that freaking super intense hump debate. I think that was some of the realest shit we've ever done on the pod. Kev, you're in, the, you're in JT. Yeah, you're blocking me, Doug. Sorry, homie. Um, but now? Yeah, but now we're, we're ready. We're ready to rock. We're going to do... We had stokers right in for legal advice, and uh, we're going to get into it, but are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, let, let me um let me do a little disclaimer here. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a lawyer, but I don't know shit. So this isn't a. These are just my opinions. I'm not trying to give anybody any legal advice. Um, 
Uh, but you are a lawyer. I am a lawyer, and I, if you're listening, I, d I do know more about these topics than you probably. But um, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be an expert here. This you know, don't take this as advice. Entertain entertainment purposes. This is for entertainment purposes. But you know what? But you know the law. You passed the bar. You've won most of your cases. You're a guy. Some would say um, I am competent, but um, we also just, I just did moan on camera. and. Uh, but what a powerful juxtaposition, man. It is a juxtaposition, you know, and uh, I've, you know, that's just the way I am. And, uh, you know, if you don't like that, suck it. Was that a good disclaimer? Yeah. yeah. That was a good disclaimer. Yeah, it was good. So uh, what the other thing is... Um, just because you ask a question on here doesn't mean daddy's your attorney. There's no attorney-client relationship here. These are just things we have to we have to say for the purposes of it. I'm not advertising for services here. Um, I really don't give a shit if you want me to be your attorney or not. Okay, so this isn't a legal advertising. I'm just opining on your questions. If your question is really personal, I might just say fuck you because uh, I want to answer it in a general way. Okay. Now, I assume most of these questions, I haven't heard them, but it's going to be some stupid scenario. So I might just say, I'm not going to answer that. If I don't know, I'm going to be honest about it. I'm going to say, I don't answer. I don't know the answer to that. Because unlike a lot of fuckers out there on the internet right now and on TikTok and Instagram who aren't even lawyers, they know the law now. Everybody knows the law, right? Hmm? Yeah? Everybody knows the law. So I was distracted. Chad was watching his doggy cam. You watching the doggy cam when I'm giving I'm, my... Uh, I'm uh, actually, that's a good time I'm to watch it. about her. Uh, what's going on? She's just being in the... She's usually sleeping. What's she doing? I think she's okay? Yeah, she's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, Does she's fine. Does it look like she's panting? Uh, do you have the air conditioner on? No. <laughs> but, you're, but you're in Culver City, I guess. Oh yeah, I mean, it's 73 there. Oh, okay. It's 73 in there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're fine. She just maybe heard something. Yeah. Is this good pod right now? Yeah. No. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. And I oh I brought my legal notepad so I can take notes. You wanna see my note right now? So I'm drawing a Chad taking a load. And it says bust and bust. That's sort of what my notepad would look like if you I'm just imagining I'm in law school or in court. This is what it's sort of my legal pad looks like. Ready? Yep. All right. Yo, what up, Kevin? What up, Chad and Jakey? Uh, question. So I got like, uh, I want to say like 16 parking tickets from this parking lot that I used to park in. And they sent me a bunch of letters to my house. And well, they sent it to my mom's house because that's where I used to live. And then my homie's house because I registered a car there. And then I finally made it to my house. So I've got like all these people that sent me photos and their tickets for like, four months span of parking there but i had a subscription the whole time and they i like i moved my tag from one car to the other and i was like don't tell me if it's not okay turns out they were just sending these tickets in the mail and so it's in a parking collection service i was wondering if they could like really bone me or if i'm like kind of good to just keep them in a drawer anyway thanks even though you're schmoll Bye. Fuck you, buddy. What was the last part? He had a subscription. What What is he talking about? I think he had a, a parking pass. He had a parking pass. So this is like a, like a college campus or something? Something like that. And what was his? He had 16 parking tickets, and he wants to know if he's going to be boned. Yeah, like is he going to get in trouble for those? If he doesn't pay them? I think so. I don't fucking know. What kind of... Is it through the college? Is it... You know, a parking ticket is... Let, let's go over parking tickets, okay? Mm. Parking tickets are the lowest of the low. Okay, daddy doesn't deal with parking tickets. Or he tries not to deal with them. Sometimes I have an idiot comic come up to me and ask me a question about a, a parking ticket. You know what I say? What? I try to give legal advice because I feel pity on them. But you know what I want to say? What? Fuck you. Why are you coming up to me with this parking shit? You never come up to me and say, Hey, Kevin, you want to do my show? You talking to me about a parking ticket? Damn. Interesting. Was that, that was, that was me getting too personal with the answer. No, no, I love it. There's okay. no wrong answer. Yeah. Parking ticket. Um, so parking tickets are what, what you call there. I think there, there, there's a few types of crimes, right? There's a felony. That's the highest type of, uh, or the most serious type of crime. Then there's a misdemeanor. 
and then there's infractions, which are like your speeding tickets and stuff. And I, I don't know if a parking ticket. I don't even think it's an infraction. I think it's even below that, or it's it's on the level with that or below that. Um, and parking tickets are usually run by either like a college campus or a city or something like that. And you don't have the right to go to court on any of these things. They're just purely fines. Sometimes they'll dole them out to a collection agency if you don't um, if you don't pay them. Uh, sometimes those collection agencies won't do anything. Sometimes they could file a small claim suit against you, or sometimes the uh, there's some kind of municipal code or something that allows them to, you know, seize your car or put a boot on your car or something like that. In your particular situation, I don't know what's going to happen. So, so you're saying if he doesn't just wait, they won't just disappear. Something, I don't know. Something's it's possible. probably going to happen. I don't know. Could or could not happen. So your legal advice would be pay your parking tickets. My legal, I'm not giving legal advice, but um, I don't know what's going to happen. He could not pay them and nothing could happen, or he could pay them and it could be resolved. So it, it's, his, it's his own risk, uh, how, however much risk he wants to take. And he looks like he likes to take a lot of risk. So he could wait for the boot and deal with it at that point, or he could try to you know, maybe call the collection agency and see if he can negotiate it down. I don't really know. It's good. I All mean, right. I, no, it's good advice. Let's get into the next one. Guy sounds like sort of like. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry, I got a question. Wait, for you. sounds like what? Sounds sort of like a. Yeah, dick. I got a question for Kevin Small lawyer. You, you thought that? <laughs> yeah, he, he sounds like a dick. I want him to come. I, I want him to come. Tell, Sixteen parking tickets. Now, can I step back a little bit? I was being too aggressive there. I don't think I needed to call him a dick right there. I think I was just angry because we go, oh, you're a schmo. Like that's a bad thing. Yeah. I thought you liked buddy. it. I do like it. It gets but old, though, right? Do you know what I don't like? The is, tone? Uh, no, I don't like... No, that guy's fine. He's cool. He actually sounds like he, he's probably chilled a party with, smoke a joint or That's something huge. like that. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't take offense of that. I was maybe just crabby. Um, you're talking about parking tickets. I don't, like, I don't like dealing with this kind of low-level bullshit. And I do deal with a lot of low-level bullshit, but parking tickets, speeding tickets, that gets, that gets daddy all riled up. All right, well, let's see, let's see if this next one's like, uh, you know, higher-stakes stuff. Yeah, I got a question for Kevin Small Lawyer. This happened like a year ago, but I just kind of want to know, like, what could have happened? I pissed on a chick's car because she was blocking my driveway one night, and I was pissed. Mm -hmm. um, pissed. Yeah. They were trying to press charges. I just denied it. But, like, what could have happened if I hypothetically did pee on the car? Interesting. Thank you. You pissed on a chick's car. I mean, I'm assuming... If you piss on a chick's car, your piss isn't going to take away the piss. It's not going to damage the car, right? It's just piss, right? Yeah, I don't think Yeah, I don't think it's, it's going to stop the car from running. So, if you pissed on her car just one night, um, one thing I'm thinking of that she could do is, uh, and she probably wouldn't win in this scenario, but she could. I've, I had a case where uh, the guy threw coffee on her, his neighbor's car, and she got tried to get... That was one of a few things, but that was part of the basis for a restraining order because she was saying like it, she had to go get it detailed and clean and it cost this much or whatever and it was harassment and stuff. But um, I guess the question is when you pissed on her car, how did, how did she know you pissed on her car? Were you on like a ring camera? Are we going to see you on TikTok? Um, uh, was it just one time? Was it a multiple occurrence? Um, did there – was there – did the piss what, what, residue stay on that's there? That's true. It's a hard thing to prove. But let's say they did have provable evidence. What would be the, the legal crime. punishment for it? So there's two things. One, she could try to get a restraining order against you. You could get a theoretically. Now, if you apply for a job, can they see that someone has a restraining order against you? How public is that information? So, I don't know if I, I'm not 100% sure about restraining orders, if they can come on your uh Job application. I know f right now for criminal uh, convictions, an employer can only see your criminal convictions on your record. So if you um, get arrested, but you get the case dismissed or what we call diverted, um, which will eventually dismiss it, the in California, employers not supposed to be able to see that unless they're like a government agency or something like that. Um, as far as a restraining order, I honestly, I honestly don't know. If you get a restraining order. I think you go into the system called Kletz, Kletz, and then uh, 
usually it's only used by law enforcement if they're going to come do that. Um, I guess theoretically, if she filed a police report, um, if you're in LA or uh, any big city, they're not going to do anything about that. Like you pissed on a chick's car. I bet most of the cops in there are pissed on a chick's car before. I've never heard of this. In high school, I had a friend who pissed on a chick. Like he pissed on this girl's leg. He just whipped it out and pissed on her. <laughs> but And was she aware? I think she was. But you pissing on... Most, I'm trying to think of... You think of, most cops have pissed on a chick's car? No. I mean, I, I'm just... No, it's interesting. I, I, what I'm thinking... Imagining, I think it's probably not true. I'm trying to imagine this scenario... No, no. Uh, you're right. I, I'm trying to imagine a scenario where you walk into the police station and say, this guy pissed on my car. <laughs> and uh, seeing if anything will come out of that. And I don't think anything will come out of that as far as an investigation. Yo, got a question for the small... Uh, so, I, I, I think you're, you're safe. Um... I mean, if you get a call from an investigator, uh, <laughs> you know, that would be interesting. But um, some uh, thing to know is if you do get a call, like, randomly from a police officer or anything like that, you have a right to remain silent, okay? And that means you don't have to talk to the, to the police under any circumstances if they call you or they're investigating anything like that. So if you were to get a random call, hey, we're just, you know, this girl's got, car got pissed on. We're trying to see, you, know, <laughs> you remember that? You don't have to talk and make any statement like that. And if you don't, and they don't have video of that or something, then um, if it's just like a he said, she said car piss, then I don't really think anything's going to happen with it. Yeah, I'm trying to think story. of what crime this would be, I guess. Vandalizing? Vandalism, but vandalism, one requirement, I believe, is that there has to be some kind of damage. So that was a question. Did the piss damage the car? I guess you could say I had to clean the piss off, and that costs a certain amount of money. So they but... could charge you for the car wash? <sighs> yeah, that or could be the restitution. Or if they're drinking monster energy all day? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was just a huge piss. Yeah. Big Mondo. So I think you're Monst right. Monster vandalism. affects paint, too. If you piss monster... Guarana Taurine that affects paint. Okay, well then, if that if that's the case, you better, buddy, you better uh, you better watch out because she's coming for you. No, I I think you're fine, and I it, that would fall under like a vandalism, or if it if there was other people witnessing, it could be like a um, you know the. I've had a few of these, like the pissing in public. I forgot what they call it. Like, uh, I forgot what they call it. I got one of those at the Waste Management Golf Tournament in uh, <laughs> yeah. Phoenix, which it has a different name yeah. now, I think. Yeah. Is, but, is, uh, yeah, they almost made me... Arizona's tough on that stuff. They were like, they were like, oh, this could be a sex offender thing. I was like, what? Oh, do you have a boner? Yeah. And, like, there was... Wow. But as far as around. pissing on somebody's car, that's actually pretty... You was know, there emotional damage? Could you sue for emotional damage? I don't think you have any uh, what's called emotional distress or tort damage because you're pissing on the person's property. If like the person I know that got pissed on tort, that, tort reform like like the hot coffee situation at McDonald's, so, something like that. Torts are basically crimes. What, usually they're encapsulated when you're like injured or something. Yeah, and tort is including physical injuries and. Um, Emotional distress damages and stuff like that. Am I talking a cool like legal voice right now, where I'm talking fast but I'm talking light? Like, yeah, no, it's, it's clear, it's, it's very lucid. Informative. Thank you. This one's a good question. Yo, got a question for the Shmuel. Uh This happened January 2020. Okay. Watching the uh, playoffs game between the uh, Titans and the Patriots. Halftime, ordered some chicken katsu from the Hawaiian spot down the street. Nice. Uh, went to go pick up my order on my bike, block away from my house. Okay. Dude turns left right into me, piece of hits shit. me, takes me out. Fuck. Uh, I immediately pop up, get a picture of his plates, but mm -hmm. he speeds off. Damn. Call 911, get picked up by the ambulance, backboarded all that shit, taken to the hospital. Okay. Uh, fortunately, got to watch the rest of the game at the hospital. That was pretty nice. sick. Um, police report, all that. Mm-hmm comes back with, uh, you know, we couldn't find the guy or whatever, even though I gave him the plates. What? Uh, fast forward, I see the guy riding my bike home one day, uh, and turns out he's my neighbor right oh, down the street. Oh, I call the detectives, they get on it, and they issue a warrant, but it's a standing warrant, and the dude is still out free. Uh, it's pretty frustrating to know where the dude lives and also have this case out, but they're not doing anything about it. Also, on top of it, the lawyers won't help me because I wasn't super injured. I didn't break any bones, but I fucked up my back uh, and haven't slept 
great since can't sleep on my side like I used to pretty whack uh and yeah so what do you think I should do okay so we're dealing with two areas of the law now we're dealing with criminal law and we're dealing with the torts that we're talking about, mm-hmm. personal injury. Yeah, so which man. one do you guys want to start off with? Whatever you feel is most important. Okay. Let's talk about the criminal law. This is a, a classic hit and run. Um, now, this is under, uh, you know, the, the difficulty with a hit and run is for any crime, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to prove that that person was the person that hit you. Okay. Um, and with a lot of hit and runs, identifying who is driving the car can be difficult. Um, so a lot of time in the hit and runs, a detective will call the person that owns the, the car and say, hey, we want to talk to you about it. And if you're stupid enough to talk to them about it, um, you'll get an admission that you were driving the car, you're doing something like that. So that could be a potential issue with any criminal charges being filed against that person because they just might have a difficulty proving you were driving the car. Like, you know, if you get a, a red light ticket and you're stupid enough to go into the court and um, they show your... they. Hit, you know, they'll show your picture on the face. And if you're, if it's not you driving the car, they'll dismiss it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you with mm-hmm, me? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I, yeah, that's my guess is either that's the hold up or they just don't care about it. Um, I don't know. Time Which happens that my car got stolen and then I got it back and I knew who stole it. I had yeah. like concrete evidence cause he left his shit in my car and they wouldn't arrest the guy. They just yeah. didn't care. Cause yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. They don't really care. And, uh, so that's that now on the, the tort side, this is what we call negligence. Um, unless he intentionally hit you with it, it doesn't sound like. So uh, negligence is, uh, the, the basic principle is everybody when they're doing most things has a duty of care towards other people. Um, so if you're a driver, when you're driving on the road, you have a duty of care to drive in a, a reasonable manner um, as not to like violate traffic laws or run over people on bikes and stuff like that. The other thing is he was making a left turn. So let's say that the guy wasn't biking. He was in a, uh, another car. Usually when you're making a left turn, you're supposed to look out, um, for it. So, um, that person who is found negligent or owes the duty of care and they breach that duty of care is usually found liable. So, uh, it sounds like he had a, pretty good case in that end and also it's usually good when you're in a bike or you're pedestrian you get hit by a car right and he went to the hospital he has some damages but the main thing on these cases am i getting too boring here no it's good good legal the main thing with the damages is uh lawyers usually aren't going to take your case unless you have damages Mm -hmm. okay so somebody could be negligent but if you have no injuries your damages really aren't shit and it doesn't justify a lawyer's you know what time. My, a comedian buddy of ours, you know what he did? He got hit by a car and realized he wasn't going to make any jing off of it. He got back surgery that he didn't really need <laughs> to, like, make it worth it for lawyers. It probably wasn't up, worth it. No, he got, like, half a mil off of it. And he, oh, so he, he thought it was worth it. It worked. It worked. He got, like, back surgery he didn't need. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, but I don't know what the long-term fuck up of it could be yeah but that surgery is scary shit but he's living the dream right now he's got a badass apartment he moved and he's like really happy damn well, dude i mean that's one angle to take on Good it for him he was ballsy it was a whisper who it was do you know who it was no really yeah what? he got hit by a car and then just got back surgery to like what was the back surgery i don't i forget what it was exactly but i remember like i was like that's insane i, I, I was I, like was friends with his roommate i went over there to hang out yeah uh, I, he comes walking out of his room like hunched over yeah. and like hobbling. I'm like, what's up, dude? He's like, I got that back surgery. I talked oh about. my God. Jesus dude. Christ. He was on the men for like, but dude, he's living the dream. He's happy as shit now. Yeah. So it worked out. Yeah, but this guy, it sounds like he, unless he wants to get the back surgery, it sounds like he's saying he's injured. Um, you need to prove those injuries. So if he's been going to the, uh, if you've just been toughing it out, it makes it difficult um, because there's no medical bills and there's no like, there's no doctor's notes or any medical reports to, you know, substantiate the pain you're going through. But if you've been going to the doctor, um, I'd say just keep looking for a lawyer. You, you could find a lawyer that might find it worthwhile, unless it's just like literally you went to the hospital. Um, and Doesn't that, this one upset but, you though that this guy got fucked so hard that this guy like just look got if somebody screwed? called me and told me what happened, 
I would have any. I just went to the hospital for this. I would have taken. I would take the case. Right. But I don't know what's going on. Why he can't find a lawyer? So maybe it just isn't now. But you just, think he's got a case? He. It sounds like he has a case for negligence. I don't know this. But he said. I mean, the guy drove left. off. That must yeah. hurt the negligence of it, right? Like in a good way. Or that, help the negligence of it, rather. Whether the guy drove off or not, it looks worse, but that doesn't factor into doesn't the negligence. It doesn't change the, what but, the incident was. But that, it doesn't, that's not doesn't look run. good. It is hidden. We just went over. Were you not listening? You're not paying attention? You're just talking fast. But, the but run, I'm talking fast, act smart. Yeah, yeah, but the run, you are smart. But the run is the run doesn't make the hit worse? The hit and run is in the factual scenario when you're making a demand. But the or hit is what run. matters more than the, the hit, run. Yeah, the hit matters more than the run as far as the negligence. Copy. The the run matters more as far as criminal. And, and just like, just a shameful piece of shit that would do that. Yeah. And on to the, run. On the negligence To part, run after you hit? It's fucked up. But it looks like he's getting away with it, huh? That's what bothers me. I, I really, I, 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 my brother heard this one earlier and he was like, dude, it's so fucked up, man. My brother wanted to refer to his buddy Jimmy, who's a lawyer. Like, I feel like this one's really going to like, it, it galvanizes a party. They're like, oh, people can just fall through the cracks of the system and not get justice. But just because he doesn't have a lawyer taking on his case, he has a guy's license plate. Usually with the license plate, there's a, I, I don't know if he's found out who the guy is yet. It sounds like he did. You can the still. The guy's riding his bike? You can still find, yeah, you can still. His bike. No, no. You can still find out if the guy has insurance. And you can make a, bike. you can make a claim with his insurance if he had insurance. If he didn't have insurance, you might have insurance. Uh, underinsured motorist that covers it. So you still can make a claim yourself without a lawyer if you can't find it. So um, don't give up on this, buddy. Um, and you're gonna feel better one day. And mm -hmm. maybe in the meantime, maybe try busting a little more. Hey, man. Busting is good for the back. Busting is good for the back. Two more. You got two more in you? Oh, I, I could go all night. All right, two more voicemails. All right, so this question is for uh, the Schmoll. Thank you. Um, Kev, I got a quick question for you. I started a business mm -hmm. uh, with my brother. Yeah. We did no contracts, no nothing. Mm -hmm. I just supplied all of the cash, the mm -hmm. entire thing. Mm -hmm. And shit went fucking south. And at that point, I bailed. And I had uh, full control of the bank account. I wrote myself a check for my initial investment, and I walked out the front door. Went to cast the check. Check got fucking declined uh, because he had put a freeze on the bank account. My question for you is, do I have legal ground to sue him for the amount of money that I invested? Um I've got I've got no contract. I've got no paperwork. I've got no, no nothing. I am uh, kind of at a loss. So at that point, I approached him and I was like, "Hey man, pay me. I'm irritated about this." So he set up a contract uh, that he was going to pay me monthly. Um, he paid me for about three months and then gave up and uh, has not made any payments in about nine months. So my question is. What leg do I have to stand on? Thanks, boy. Mm -hmm. So let me, I, I sort of tuned out, um, but he started a business with his brother. Yeah. He put up all the cash for the business. Mm -hmm. No contract and put up all the cash. But then he said he tried to write a check and his brother froze out the account. That's where I got lost. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it must have been, he put all the money, I guess, into a dual account. A dual account. That's what uh, it must have and been. Brother, and his brother froze it and wouldn't let him get the money out. And so basically his brother stole the money. What, what is he alleging the brother did with the money? Uh, he's keeping it and he's in charge of the it money. Now. And then his brother was going to compensate him monthly. Like was oh, going to so put him on some kind of installment plan for it. Is he blew the money on like strippers and coke? For sure. Okay. That sounds like that guy. So the first thing, first thing uh, he, and he already alluded to this, he had no contract. Um, if you're going to get into business with anybody, including family, and you're going to start a business, you want to always put things in writing, uh, either a partnership agreement or some other kind of... How informal can the writing be? Like, could it be on a yellow legal pad? It could be on a yellow legal pad, but nowadays you got like legal zoom. You guys could literally just go up and pay like, well, it's like a hundred bucks. So there's no excuse for not having it. No excuse. And especially, I mean, if your brother's going to do something like this, there had to be indications that he was a probably a fuck up before that and you need to be a little more careful with your money on uh with him so uh, he doesn't need to be lectured on that he knows he made a mistake by not making a contract and then the second part is 
he said he made a separate contract with him. I don't know. So it made it seem like it. His it, brother made the. Contract, it's turning right? into like a loan or something, and his brother's paying him back from that or something, and he's not paying him back. Um, I guess you could. Uh, for, so first, for the first thing, even though there's no contract on the business formation, you can still prove a contract. It's called an oral contract. Can you guys repeat that for me? Oral, oral contract. contract. Yeah. And uh, oral contract is still could be, I mean, depending on the laws of your state, I think there's still a way to prove a contract through um, other evidence besides the contract. <laughs> like you put all this money into his account. Maybe there's text messages exchanged between you guys that could constitute a contract. Like, hey, let's start a business. Okay, I need, you know, $20,000. Oh, yeah, just put it into the bank account. Or here's my control of the bank. You know, all those things. So there could be the existence of a contract even though you don't have it in writing initially. The second part is I don't know what the fuck's on that other one, but I guess that could theoretically, if there is proper consideration... I'm not going to explain to you guys what that is because it's going to go too far, but I'm going to keep talking really fast. Um, if there, if there's, con if it's a legit contract, I guess you could try to enforce that. You would have to sue him for both of those things. Um, and I don't know. It sounds like this, does he even have, the other part is, you know, you can sue anybody for anything, but if he's already blown all the money, um, then you're sort of fucked. So, so, if, so if you if you put the paper against him and you're like, all right, I'm suing you, he could just be like, all right, I'm getting sued. I'm just going to, go to Jamaica for a week and burn through this cash. I mean, so you, could, you, could get a, I mean you could get a judgment against anybody you want, but if he doesn't have any money, it's just going to be in judgment. And then what are you going to do? You're going to, you can, you can try to collect from him. You can hire collection agencies. Sounds like this guy doesn't have a job to take from his paycheck. And, and, and you're saying doesn't with have the, property. And with the, he said, she said, or he said, he said, that's harder like to this. prove. But I mean, if, if you have some kind of tax messages or if you're putting the money into the account and he has no explanation, there must have been text messages. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming what he's going to say is he's going to be like, no, he loaned me the money to, you know, start how effective my own business are text or correspondence in court? Um, I mean, if that's, it could be very strong evidence. Have you used text before in court? I have had things where I've dealt with text. I actually had a case where, um, the accuser, uh, you know, on like iMessage, you can delete text. I didn't even know that until this case, but you can take an individual text. So take your it's a recent conversation, thing, right? You this can, was you, like you five, can, six years ago. This deletes on both phones? Yeah, you can no. delete text on both phones now. Oh, on really? both phones? Yeah, watch. I'll do it right now with you. It's great. It's like new. Oh, Damn. well, what she did is she deleted I know, it. I wish that was there like years ago. I would have saved yeah. myself. She deleted pain. it on her end presented to the court and we had the original text messages mm. so i just showed that to her wow and Check that deletes on his end yeah there's nothing Ooh, that's that's john unsent a message though oh it that's says he it unsent says. a message yeah but i think also if you send four there might not be any real trace of it mm. interesting you know if there's an oral agreement and it's uh, there's no like case law or anything in this, the state where he's in that says you can't that there should be some kind of common law or something that says the oral contract so you could prove it in those two things I don't know how much money is involved if it's like five thousand dollars but usually when you start a business that's usually like fifty thousand a hundred thousand so I hope he didn't yeah. give all that money um, to his brother yeah we don't know how much Jay it was it could have been rather changing so yeah that's gonna be an awkward thing um, <laughs> what was his question though does he have any legal grounds I think he's he does. I, to think. Stand on. I mean, depending on how much money, I, I, the problem is uh, to get a lawyer, you're going to have to pay hourly probably on this. They're not going to take this on contingency. So if if you can um, muster up the money for a lawyer um, and, you know, it sucks because it's your brother, but it looks like your brother fucked you over. So uh, maybe or you can tell your mommy. Yeah. Has you, have you tried telling your mommy? Dude, honestly, that's not bad advice to bring the parents into it yeah. and just be like, hey, bro, bro stole my cash. I think he needs to suffer some consequences. Like, um, I'm still maybe he doesn't get the boat after dad croaks. I'm still confused how the brother gained control of the money. Yeah, that was a little fidgeted about. All maybe right, they, maybe a business account, a joint business account, or whatever. We'll but. write in again. But, all right, last cue. You ready? Yeah. Hey, what's going on? This is a question for the Schmoll Kevin. I just started uh, law school. Nice. Uh, last week. Yeah. And I've I've gotten the vibe that everyone there is uh, yeah, taking this pretty fall. serious, and I'm kind of not a serious guy in terms of I, I like to have fun and joke yeah. around. I, like I was wondering if you had any ideas on uh, how maybe 
we can spice things up inside of law school and make this a little bit more enjoyable for everyone. So thank you, Shmuel, for answering my question. Oh, he didn't even, that's a long piss. He didn't even finish. Was this question how, how he to make can make law school more spiced up? More spiced he, up. He, he says people need, are taking it too serious. Right. He doesn't need to worry about that. You're talking to daddy here, okay? Um, I'm more fun than you. I know he was taking a piss there. You sound fun. Uh, he's probably more fun than me, isn't he? This guy no. Cool. no. No, he sounds cool. Yeah, no so, shit. Yeah, Dude, he is. really intimidated you by peeing during the question. No, no, I was impressed by it. Not not that he was pissing during it, but that the stream The length of lasted. piss. But didn't it sound like it was dribbling the whole time? It was a tinkle. Honestly, to me, it sounded like he had a... I, I'm, I'm calling him out right oh, now. Oh, you're thinking he's faking it? I think it? he had a glass of water and oh. he was doing a little a little bit bit. Okay, well, I, I'm gonna. I, I hope he's not doing you that. You fucking I mean, pussy. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Okay, that was too much. Okay, so you you don't need to make law school more fun. It's gonna be plenty of fun. Uh, as far as people are gonna be stressed out at night, especially your first year. It's like your first year of college. You're gonna be meeting everybody. People are gonna be fucking and sucking all over the place. You know, a little slap, slap, slap. You're gonna go out to the bars and the clubs on the weekend, but you're gonna still study. Okay, so. What you need to do is you have to study a lot in law school. There's a lot of work involved in it, but there's a lot of pleasure too, okay? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to make it more fun. Um, be yourself. Keep pissing, um, you know, uh, and, and you'll be fine. Um, Are you saying you got sucked a lot in high school? High school or law school? Law school. I didn't get sucked a lot. I got sucked. You got sucked? But And I'm not even talking about my experience. Like a lot It's of sort of suck. like you're, su you're in such a stressed out environment and it's so competitive and everybody's, you know, all up against it. And so, you know, it sort of becomes like that high school thing where it, there's, you're, not, you're only surrounded by these people. So some people are going to start dating. Some people are going to start banging. There's going to be drama. Um, it's going to be a whole thing. So he'll have plenty of fun. Don't, don't worry about that. R right now, just focus on your studies. Try to do good. But even if you, who, who gives a fuck? You, but how's he going to change the tempo in the classroom when people are trying to be extra studious and serious as you would expect? You with don't a lawyer. need to change the tempo in the classroom. You can be serious in the classroom. And then on the weekends, you guys are going to have fun. Right. So that's where he'll thrive. Just like is an off hours. When I, when daddy goes to court, I'm all, I'm serious, okay? There's no jokes, okay? Daddy is serious. But when I step out of that courtroom, we're talking cock. Well, that, that's that's one thing I find cool about serious, jokey people is when they enter in serious mode, it's usually they're talking about loads, but then when they get serious, yeah. you know, I'm like, wow. They it, have dimensions. They have dimensions. They have different sides to them. They have a, a serious side. They talk fast like you. You see how fast I'm talking? When I, yeah. I, ju I just can see a Joe's dong just swirling around your mind. Mm. Yeah, but I'm talking fast and I'm talking monotone. And that's yeah. how you do it Using on these podcasts. Using words like contingency and muster. I listen to some of these podcasts. That's just sort of how you have to talk. Like NPR? Yeah. And Kevin, as a world-class provocateur, what's the most you've ever antagonized your opposition in court? And what was the reaction you got? I, I think I already told this story. I, I, in... Well, first of all, I'm a generally annoying guy too. So if I if when so I walk weird into court, and annoying. I walk into court, I and I tell this to my clients. I'm all I'm fucking annoying. So like when I'm t talking, when I'm uh, crossing a cop, I'm very annoying, and they you can tell they get pissed off. Oh really? Same thing with like, usually when a if I have something that I think is reasonable and I'm negotiating with a prosecutor talking to them and I don't think they're being reasonable, I am annoyed. You, you just get, I just What's give me the guy like? what he wants. Look, I can't do that. I'll, I'll pretend to be the prosecutor. I apologize. Okay, what, what, what kind of case do we have? Like, a, let, okay, let's set up a scenario. Okay, let's yeah. say, let's say Chad's my client, okay? Yeah. And he's been arrested because he was hanging around a dumpster, okay? Getting sucked. Gets, getting sucked and he was trying to suck, but the problem is he can't bust, okay? And so it, it makes him very vulnerable because he's out there getting sucked for so long and he can't bust. So, pew, pew, pew. Heads up, what are you doing back there? I'm just trying to get sucked. Oh, yeah? I can't bust. You can't bust? I, I can't bust. Well, guess what we do with guys that can't bust? No, what? We take him to the fucking pen. Oh, no, no, Get your man. fucking hands up. I haven't even busted yet. Get your fucking hands oh, up. Come on, Oh, you'll dude. be busting. No. When I'm taking you, you're going to bust. Trust me, buddy. I want to talk to my lawyer. Not busted. I want to call Kevin Schmard the lawyer. Oh, you want that guy? Fuck this shit. I'm getting out of here because I don't want to deal with it, that fucking guy. Oh, that was awesome. Kevin, you saved me. 
Oh wait, we're still in court. <laughs> now I'm we're up? in court. Am I up? Wait, what are we doing now? Well, well no, so, so let's transition. So he got arrested. Oh, now, sorry. I, we were really into this. Yeah, no, and it's just beautiful. Stopped. It just now stopped. you're his lawyer. Okay. Now I'm the prosecution. Okay. Now we're... Uh, oh, so you're the prosecutor. Right? Yeah, yeah, now we're negotiating. Yeah, I pin you for a prosecutor. All right, so now you're going to be um, just sitting at... So what happens is when you go into court, the prosecutor is sitting on one side of the table, and then usually the other side of the table is the public defender. You guys sit at the same table? No, we don't sit at the... Oh, there's one long table, okay? Oh, because in movies it's different. They're separate tables. That's sometimes, why I'm surprised. I mean, sometimes they're separate. No, in all movies it's they're separate. separate tables. In L.A. and Southern California, usually it's like one long table. Every John Grisham done. book, the tables, they got a lot of I don't know what to tell you. Them. I don't know it's, what to tell you, bitch, but... In LA, it's one long table. It's usually one long. It's, it would be like this, and then it's partitioned. Wow. Sometimes it's two tables. You know what? I'm not really paying attention to how many <laughs> no, it's tables fine, it's there fine. Let's are. Keep okay? Let's keep kicking. Let's keep kicking. Okay. All right, all right. So the prosecutor was sitting there. Okay. Yeah. And then um, the public <laughs> defender will be on there just when you come in the morning. Before, sure. Uh, you know when they're calling calendar. Now this is the first thing you gotta. Uh, there's two types of prosecutors. Okay. So when I'm the uh, Defense attorney, um, I'm walking in court. I'm not already set up like the public defender there because I just have usually one case that I'm going in on. Um, and the prosecutor is sitting with all their cases. So, so they're there all day just running through Yeah, they're there cases. in the morning because they have the whole calendar. They have all Fuck, the cases. There's sucks. one prosecutor assigned to every courtroom, and they usually handle the calendar. And then when there's So a, they're just putting people away or punishing people from 8 to 5 or whatever the hours are. Yeah. I got a hair right here, and it's... Yeah, I see it. Yeah, your hair is everywhere. I need to get the hair Screaming out. infidelities. Okay, so the prosecutor's sitting right here with their calendar. The first thing you need to do is you need to talk to the prosecutor about your case. Sometimes you need to get the police report. Sometimes you need to talk to them about the deal. So you can't call your case up in front of the judge until you talk to the goddamn prosecutor. And this is how you tell if the prosecutor's a dick or not, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is when uh, the judge is not on the bench, okay? So there's no judge in there. You can talk freely in the court or anything like that. Some prosecutors they'll see you and you'll sort of stand next to them and they'll oh hi hey what's up what case do you have okay that person is not a piece of shit okay but then you have the prosecutors that they sit there they know you're standing right there and they just sit on their phone or they're just typing and you i sort of get closer to them and get closer to them to see if they'll say anything and they, they don't say anything and you you, you sort of <clears throat> and, and they don't look at it but they know you're there you know somebody's right there they know you're there and they don't there, a lot of them they just don't fucking talk to you and they just make you wait for like 10 minutes and that gets daddy's fucking juices flowing and i go okay if you want to be fucking annoying i'm gonna be fucking annoying and i'm just gonna be pestering at you but um, Don't that's keep going, keep going. you. That's you. Sort of have to take a chill. Now, so thing. do you think they're being that way because they want to beat you in the case, or because they just no. think they're hot shit and they don't got to deal with people? I don't even know if it's just hot shit. I think there's just something wrong with them as a person. I think mm. this isn't just them being a prosecutor. This is uh, they're doing this kind of stuff in in their normal life. Because I could only imagine if I'm I have all the cases and somebody comes up to me and I see them and hey hey what's up what case do you have that's it mm -hmm. that's not that hard. Wait, what case do you have? Right, let's try it. Okay. Okay, I'm right, staying right next to you. Um. Uh. <coughs> excuse me. No. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, I'm here. I have a case. Nice. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay, then I'll start pacing around, okay? Then I'm gonna act really annoyed. I'm gonna start showing it with my body language. And then I'll look at another attorney. How long you been waiting here, buddy? I go, oh fuck, I haven't talked to her either. Cause there's usually a few of us there. And I'll start talking shit about, I'll go sit down and I'll, st you know, you're the other defense attorney. So how long you been waiting for your case to be called? Like 30 minutes, dude. Did you do this with everybody? Looks, looks mm -hmm. like it, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. I have a murder case too. You have a murder case. Yeah. Nice. I have a dumpster sucking case. Guy got sucked off behind a dumpster. Wow, you got dumpster sucking? I saw that in the yeah. I saw that in the yeah. paper. Oh, okay. That's quite a score. You saw that in the paper? You saw the dumpster that made the front page? That's a big score, man. How'd yeah. you land that case? 
I'm the attorney for all the guys that get. I, I hang out by the dumpsters. Uh, Some guys are the attorney for the rappers that you hear about. I'm the yeah. dum, I'm the guy. I'm the dumpster attorney. Kevin Fard. Yeah, that's me. I heard about you. In fact, I put all my billboards right above the dumpsters. Yeah. So if you're getting sucked off, you can't. You know, like when you're coming through out of LAX and mm-hmm. you see the uber accident lawyer you see that like their billboards for the uber and accident lift lawyers yeah so the uber drivers can see that if they get into an accident i'm above all the dumpsters in town you and you have such a great detail on your ads you have a jizz stain getting sucked off yeah get caught getting sucked off and it's a huge jizz stain yeah so it's like people people know right when they it it catches the eye you know the ones that say on the highway says injured question mark Mm -hmm. that's all they have to say yeah sucked off sucked Sucked. Sucked? Sucked. That was me out of character. Nice. Um, hey, I have a, a murder case. They're calling my client the next Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, some call my client the next fuck uh, <laughs> Ted Bundy of sucking. All right, we got a little off track with that improv. What were we talking about? <laughs> that's all I had to say about, you know, you're sort of you're you. Sort that's of how you tell them. if they're a dick or not. That's how you tell if they're a dick. But so do you. So do you talk to them first and try to broker a deal so that you can go into the case with the something first thing already you'll on do, the table? No, the first thing you'll do is you'll get the police report, and then usually you'll get like ask for like an opening offer. So this is the offer that they're going to start out with for your client to take the deal. Then you got to read through the police report, and then it's, you usually will just continue the court case out so you can get your discovery, anything videos or anything that um, you have, and um, you go for there. And then sometimes you'll the next time you come to court or you'll I'll email them but um, a lot of times when you email the district attorney or uh, city attorney in the, the, this town um, they don't respond to your emails so you got to email them again and you got to email them again and you got to email them again and you got to email them again excuse me did you get my fucking email that's gotta drive you crazy it drives you crazy that shit pisses me off and there's a problem right now because in the courts and the prosecutor's office and everything there's a big shortage okay so they're they're swamped. They got all these cases. The cops aren't arresting less people. They got all these cases. There's less district attorneys. There's, there's a less shortage judges. Of prosecutors. Prosecutors and judges. It's just the courthouses are just shit shows right now. Mm. Sometimes you go into a courtroom. It's a new judge every time. It's a fucking mess. It's a new judge every time. New judge because the the, the the court they call it an orphan court. You know they don't have enough judges to fill out the why, courtroom why permanently. Is that? I don't know. I don't know the judges thing. Maybe there's not enough funding for judges. And so what's the, is there, what are like the downstream ramifications of having an orphan court? Like, does it lead to worse outcomes for people? It leads to less predictable outcomes because I can't go into court and say, okay, this is this judge. And right, you I can't know. game plan or scout the judge because you don't have experience Because next time I'm going to have them. a different judge. Right. Yeah. That's tough. Mm-hmm. So you can't do your job as well because you're like, I don't know who I'm playing against. Yeah. And sometimes it's a good thing maybe to get a new judge in there, you know. If it's a bad judge ordinarily. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It could work out. All right, should we keep kicking? Yeah, I, get... I just gotta say, Kev, this kind of makes me want to be a lawyer. Hmm. Whoa! Huh? You think you can be a lawyer? Yeah. Okay. Here's the first test. Yeah. Welcome to my firm. I see you applied for an internship. Mm-hmm. Huh? What are you gonna do to <laughs> quick, quick get time. an internship at quick this time out. Quick time out. Oh. I think I know where this is going. Keep going. What was your question? You want an intern at this firm? You know what an internship at this firm gets you? You intern at this firm, you can make partner in five years. You're making a lot of money. But what well, are you going to do to stand out from the crowd? Everybody's applying. Harvard, Yale, all the students, they want an internship at this firm. <coughs> You're in Hollywood, bitch. More specifically, Century City. You heard a CAA... I own the building that they're in. I'm the law firm. How about this? To all the stars. Do you want to be a star lawyer? <clears throat> How about this? How about I suck you off behind a dumpster? Go on. And I'll make you bust mm. in under five minutes. Where's he gonna bust? Where are you gonna bust? No, you gotta know. Uh, no, I was. It was I was asking the question right, that I was start gonna up, answer. Start up. Start up. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you know where you do you know? No, where no, start up. You uh you wanna join my firm? What are you gonna do to stand out from the crowd? 
How about this? You see that row of dumpsters behind the building? I see them in my mind 24-7. How about I suck you off behind mm. those dumpsters? Oh, yeah? Am I going to bust? You're going to bust in under two seconds. <sighs> That's how good Is I Is that am. the best you can do? Two seconds? Uh, I'm like a Dyson vacuum. And you will bust all over my face. Oh, Which Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something, young hey, man. Hey, I swear to God, shades of shades of the firm with Tom Cruise. I'm feeling it. Let me tell you something, young 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 man. You got me stuttering there, and that means you got me off my toes. You're gonna be a good lawyer. You're gonna be an excellent lawyer. Welcome to the firm. Whoa, he's hired. All right, now hold on. Can I can I can go I get, get me some coffee, bitch? Sh yeah. That you were my secretary. That's. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I try to say I'm gonna suck your dick too? Wait, but okay. Well, well, let's set up the scenario. Are you in? Are um, you in same, law school? Same, same deal. Same deal. Okay. All right. Oh. No, 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 no. Welcome. I see you want to be an intern at this firm. You know this is one of the most prestigious firms in all the land. Yes, sir. In the world. Yes, sir. So, what are you going to do to separate yourself from the pack? I'm going to suck your dick. Go on. I'm going to make you come so fast. I swear to God, all I want to do is make you come as fast as I can. And I want to make you come as fast as you'll ever come. <laughs> and look at me. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> I want to look at you while you come. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> See, you think it's funny too. Yeah, but that wasn't as crude. That wasn't. That was a way. That was the same vibe he was using for that. That wasn't the. We're not right, going back to the right. seal. I didn't. I didn't weird it out. Yeah, we were. I was trying that to. Weird I was stage. trying to make it serious. Oh, so you went kind of serious there. I well, because I started I off serious. But with humping, it's different. Yeah, this is serious. This is law stuff. This isn't a fucking. This is this a law firm. This isn't a comedy right, show. Yeah, this right. is real life. This is esteemed <laughs> graduates of Harvard Law. Okay. Dude, it's this interesting. Is just, these right. aren't just suck jobs from any huh? any right. old jabroni. So, so like, okay, that's very interesting. So, the the scene that we're just debating about was us humping a seal. Mm -hmm. But if we were humping the statue of like Clarence Darrow, Darrow, mm. like a great lawyer, mm. would you guys have humped different? No, because that's comedy. This is real life. <laughs> is this improv a, a shtick or is this like worse in a drama right now? I got to say, you got me in a place where I don't know. Exactly. This is a drama. This is real. We went to the legal questions. We're way past the shtick on Netflix. I mean, I mean, the, the image of you locking eyes with Kevin as he busts. One one uh, that that's not comedy. That's but one one. It made him laugh. One criticism I would because have because he because he was imagining it like uh, he was tickled by it uh, the way you're gonna tickle his cock. Yeah. Now let's ask Aaron a question. Aaron, wait, wait, Aaron's wait, wait, my wait. I don't partner. disagree. I want to know. I want to know who Aaron. Aaron, I'm asking you for advice. Who should I hire between those these two interns? I think JT. Whoa. 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 I did not expect that, genuinely. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, what's the beat? I'll work hard for you. You don't think I can suck? I think you can. I just felt like I, I believe JT more. Oh. So would you say believability is tantamount to meaning? In a drama. Yeah, in a drama, yeah. Which it was. I'm not a big fan of comedy. <laughs> you don't have to say that twice. <laughs> Oh, dude. You roasted me, dude. All right, guys, Wait, let's. Should we try to have Kevin apply for a job? Yeah, dude, mm -hmm. you be the boss. You be the boss. <clears throat> well, welcome to the firm. Thank you, and I, I just want to say hold thank on, you for giving. On. Yes, Daddy. Interesting. Oh, I see that you've applied. Mm-hmm. We have graduates from Harvard. Only Harvard. You ever seen the show Suits? I've seen the show Suits, and I'll watch it again if you want to. And I must say... Uh, let me... 
this law firm is based off the show suits. Mm. Now you want that kind of prestige, right? You want the top cases. You want the top dollar. You want the Lamborghini. <laughs> you want the secretary like this man over here. Yeah. Look at him. Now what are you going to do? I've seen your resume. It's okay. There's hundreds of you I could choose from right now. What are you going to do to earn a spot at this law firm? That's interesting you asked. I already knew you like suits. I know everything about you, Daddy. And that's why I brought a wig and a woman's suit. And I'm going to dress up like Meghan Markle. And I'm going to suck you like, like, your, no. Prince Harry, like your Prince Harry. No. And uh, you're going to bust. <laughs> I'm not believing you. <laughs> Kevin, we're in a drama. Uh, notes call. Yeah. First. Oh, I can't dress up like a woman. In no, because you didn't mean it. You don't mean it. And also, you called him daddy uh. in your second line. This is not, this is an application. This is a job um, interview for a prestigious job. You're going to call your boss right. daddy? Let Come me, on, let's man. Let's go again. Let's go again. Fuck. <clears throat> Mr. Fard. Welcome to the firm. Thank you, sir. Are you willing to do what it takes to earn a spot at this firm? This is the most prestigious firm in all of Beverly Hills. Are you willing to do what it takes to earn a spot at this law firm? I am willing, and I've been waiting for this moment my entire life. What are you willing to do? I'm willing to do anything and everything. And that involves your cock in my mouth. Is my cock in your mouth a laughing matter, Mr. Fard? Only because <laughs> loads, loads make me giggle. <laughs> you can't do it, dude. You can't act I, in I drama, bro. Bro, that so was much. crazy. I'm glad we got that on camera, that tension where he just had to say loads. His dude, brain just I was like. I created this whole scene. I created everything. You are a good director. You're a good yeah. director. That's no doubt about it. You painted a scene, and it's we all Dan. busted inside of it. Yeah, okay. All right, should we get to the last kicker, boys? Yes, sir. Chad, what is your beef of the week? Let oh, me... Before we start, I had it. Can we, can we do a... a I, I, brought a I brought a guest. Go, yeah. go. Hi. <laughs> JT, I heard you and your daddy. <laughs> yes, that's true, Elmo. Yeah, you want to? You want to? You want me to suck you? <laughs> <laughs> sure, Elmo. I'd love that. Mm. Oh wait, I had actually. I was gonna do a, a a new father quiz with Elmo. Oh yeah, go go Should go. Should we go, do go. that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Because you're a new father. Have you taught? You, yeah, yeah, okay. they, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I talked about it. I took a new father's quiz and I I got a hundred percent on it. Um, oh, nice! I'm nervous. It's cool. It's Elmo. You should uh, you should get one of these. Yeah. Let's hear your Elmo. Can you do an Elmo? Yeah, let me see. Let me get the thing first. Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> hey, it's me. Hey, Chad. Good to see you, dude. My guy. Hey, Kevo, how you been, bro? I've been great. Hey, that's what I like to hear, man. You know I'm always rooting for you, right? Kevin, look at me. I'm looking at you. You know you're my guy, right? I hope I am. All right, you are my guy. Why you hope? Don't hope. Believe. Believe and achieve. That's Elmo. I mean, I think it was funny, but the kid's not going to like it because the voice is too low. Fuck, dude. I'll work on it. You failed, dumbass. You gotta talk high like this. I'm Elmo. I'm Elmo. Yeah. Dude, I think this is just one of those pods that like, when someone <laughs> listens to, they're like, man, this is just like me and my friends. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm listening to the Chad and JT pod, and I've been listening from the beginning, and this small guy, he just talks too much, and he's talking over them, and I don't like this. No, 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 no. I have complaints about the podcast. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
Oh no, the guest is bringing bits to the show and not just sitting back. All right. Um, yeah, they're, they're into it. They're into it. JT, how long should you let your newborn cry before responding? I think they're supposed to have an hour or two of unexplained crying a day, so I'm going to go with probably five to ten minutes. No! <laughs> You're supposed to pick him up right away and console him because he's just a baby and he doesn't understand that yet. That's true. There, you can't hold him too much. I have failed seen the that. first question. Next, yeah. how many times a day does an average newborn eat? Eat? Uh, every two to four hours. I go every three hours. That's acceptable. Thank you. What's the standard on vice and how long after childbirth you should wait until you and your partner can have sex? I haven't even checked that. I'm going to guess six weeks. Good job. I bet you've really been studying that, you pervert. Now you want to put your dick in her? All right, that was too much. Okay. <laughs> All right, we've have we exhausted this bit? No, this is fine. Oh, I'm, you like it? I, okay. Yeah, I want to know. What's the number one never leave home without an item you should bring for an afternoon in the park with your six month old? Man, we're kind of far away from that, but that's a good question. I'm gonna say, um, your cell phone, a burp cloth, the video camera, a diaper, or sand toys. I mean, diaper. Yeah. When can you start reading to your baby? Right away. Yeah, of course. It's not going to harm the baby if you talk to him with a book. But the baby might not be interested in all the stupid books that you, you're reading right now. So you should probably read like a children's book. Don't read them like... Graham Greene or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, the baby's not that interested in... The Nobody cares cows. about your, your, your books. What's... <laughs> um, let's see. Umberto Eco. Mm. What's the safest plane in the car for your newborn to ride? Oh, good question. I mean, backseat car seat, right? Like back left? Yeah, that's, a, that's good enough. What's the correct answer? Just, just the bag? Yeah, you don't want them where the car, like airbag is. Yeah, no shit. You're doing good, John. You're JT. You're doing good. Don't worry. You're good father. Yeah, and I'm so still much. John in your phone? Oh, yeah. That's crazy, dog. Yeah. What should you always bring when your wife breastfeeds? What should I always bring? Is there options or just no? A, a glass of water. B, a video camera, C, her favorite beer, or the TV remote? Uh, A or D. Yeah, a glass of water. I feel like this is starting to fall flat. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I gotta be honest, like... <laughs> Do I, you want I, me I'm, to suck you off to I'm, spruce this up yes, or something? I'm glad I'm doing well on it. I thought it would be a bit more oh, difficult. Oh, Chad! Oh, you're a great father! Oh, fuck yeah. May I call you yeah, daddy, fuck. Chad? Yeah, that feels oh. good. Oh, you're gonna make me come. <laughs> yeah, you wanna bust? You like busting? <laughs> okay. Keep kicking, keep pushing. We're getting late. Okay, here's, getting late. Late. here's the last one. Last one. Alright, go ahead, go. What's the safest position for babies to sleep? On their back. Yeah. Dude, I learned a lot, actually, yeah. from this. Yeah, well, even it, well, it, it scared me at first because they, they like to go under their side because it's kind of like being in the fetal position. But if you Google it, it's, like, dangerous because the fear is they'll go under their stomach and then it's easy for them to suffocate and they don't yeah. have the strength to get off their stomach. That's scary. But, but they're, so I would, like, push them to the edge of the bassinet, which is mesh, so you, there's no fear there, so that they couldn't, like, turn to their desired side. And then you also don't want them on their side too much because it could flatten their head a bit, too. So mm. Oh, it's if, still, like, kind of... It's still shaping their dome, so if they're prone to one side, you got to flip the head to the other side. Wow. But you want them on their back. But then, like, my brother today was funny because, like, I gorged them with, with uh, milk and formula, and, you know, they spit up after they're done eating. So you're supposed to keep them upright for, like, 20 to let them digest it. It's so cute to watch them digest. Yeah. But then uh, if you put them on their back, my brother was worried about them spitting that way. But I think it's hard to choke on liquid. Right. the way it goes. 
Chad, you would know about choking on liquid. Is that correct? Oh, no way, dude! <laughs> we picked it up after the Elmo thing. I think my Elmo voice is pretty good, though, right? Kevin, I gotta tell you, dude. Like, truly, if someone's listening to this, you come in with a Pink Floyd song, then you do the hump philosophy, you did your whole backstory on how you lost your virginity, you talked about where your predilection for cum thought comes from, then you went into straight legal talk, and then you did the Elmo character. I mean, you've checked like 15 I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades. Jack? And I'll jack you off. And I'll I won't trade, trade you. In any trade. For a jack. No. Do you shave the top part of your mustache to give it more shape? Sometimes I get, oh yeah, so usually I'll, I'll shave like right, I don't think I did it now, but sometimes I'll shave like this part, right? You see the shorter part? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll get right up here. Yeah. Yeah, but I do I do give it some, you're trying to get some beard advice, aren't you? You're yeah, growing yeah. out that beard. Yeah. yeah. You like that beard. You know what my advice is? Just uh, shave the beard more than the mustache. And it lets, I've told Joe to do this. I give Joe um, advice on, you know, looks and stuff. Let the let the mustache be a little longer than the beard. Yeah, it is and it three lets, and five. Yeah, it lets the mustache sort of pop, uh, pop out and looks pretty yeah. nice. Okay, we can get, let's get to your stuff. All right, my beef. My beef is, dude, so yeah, you know, I'm a little disappointed this didn't shake out the way we thought. You know, we probably could have put a little bit more effort into it, a little more consistency. But during COVID, Kevin and I, you know, we're passionate teabaggers, and we, at least I truly thought that we could get a good Twitch going that's just teabagging. And I just don't think that there's the same passion in the country for teabagging no. as we had. I thought there was an audience for it. Right, so like when people watch gamers stream generally they want the gamers to be compelling but almost as good. important they want them to really rip shit at the yeah. game yeah. yeah if we're teabagging and we're also getting like 30 kills if you game. guys were like dr disrespect or right. slayton or or uh, the other dude they play with um you guys might it might it might be picking up more steam that that's one thing i lacked is i was bad at the game and you don't have fat, or, or you can be like a really hot gal well and, and you guys don't have fat bubbles. i mean and we're right. not you need to do this eight hours a day Every day. Well, dude, that's the crazy. Like our Jake, our, our main man, who like runs all of our shit. What up, Jake Ledge? He'll be like, "Yeah, dude, like you should get on Twitch. You just got to do like you know like eight hours a day." And yeah. like the biggest guy on there, I don't know. If that, like I'll I'll misremember this and sound old, but he was like, "Oh yeah, Kai Senator, whatever his name is." He's like, he got big because he was twitching for ten hours during one day, and a, and a mouse ran through the stream and scared him. And that that's clip, how I got big? And the clip did like 100 million views or something. Really? And I'm like, so oh, so I just have to be on there long enough for something uh, yeah. crazy, bizarre, and just non-predictable to happen. I'm like, yeah. that's not, you know, I can't, I can't do that. Yeah. It's just not my brain. But mass respect to the people who do it. Well, I think, I think too, with guys like that, which I think we did bring a lot of enthusiasm to teabagging, but... We had a loyal following of like six to seven people. Yeah. Shout out to... Um, Dog genitals. Dog genitals, yeah. Oh, nice name. Uh, you oh. know, the thing might be, you guys just, because the clips do well when it's just you guys going, Ugh, like, cause the, <laughs> like, um, that's good, right? Yeah. I think, I think, I think the clips <laughs> do well. You guys go, uh -huh. So maybe you guys got to play together and then just bag each other. Do it. No, do like a highlight reel oh, yeah. of the bags and like put like badass, like Eminem, lose yourself music behind it. Yeah. And then just have you guys bagging. For like a minute, it, it might not be the stream, but there's stuff from the stream that might work, yeah. right? And well, the technology is sort of and, and just highlight what you're best at, which is the bagging. Yeah, I mean, it's really annoying to do streaming on like an Xbox, getting all the equipment to record and stuff. Right. Like it's so much easier on a computer, but um, well, how bad do you want it? Computer. That would be my question. How bad do you <clears> want <throat> it? I mean, it's clear that we both probably, you know, if if you're saying because you guys want it to come easy, you guys want people to love you guys bagging. But you guys don't want to put in we the hard bag. Yeah. We don't want yeah. to work. I, I'm not. Yeah, and I, that's why we're not. We, we we enjoy it when we do. Well, it, do you though. love it? Yeah. Then fight for it. Huh. That's good advice. I mean, I've really played Call of Duty too. Yeah. The problem. No, is, I'm like two iterations. The problem now is point. getting in on the Call of Duty. Nobody's playing Call of Duty anymore. They blew it. Well, my my, my homies are back. My friends went back. They said they the said new. It's better they now? said the new map wow. isn't as good as like Verdansk. But now we're living way in the past. But yeah. they're saying it's better than uh, whatever came after Caldera. 
but they let people stop getting addicted and um that's the thing yeah they, we, we got off yeah Kev, oh, oh, Kev, watch out you're uh, you're in jt shot oh, again okay. i miss it dude i miss for dance it was, it was heavy COVID times too you had yeah Rebirth island and all that yeah we had more time we you didn't have a lady you didn't have a dog yeah dude remember 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 lockdown it was fun just yeah oh, competitive side of me died i was like no one's doing shit just relax yeah start jacking off again kevin who's your beef of the week uh chad You know why. Oh, I know why. Explain it to the people. So, Kevin and I, we took some time while we were in San Francisco to make a video. There's statues of seals in San Francisco. A lot of statues of seals. <laughs> and we spent probably... I was in San Francisco with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't we invited. Spent, we spent probably about four hours making a compilation of us getting sucked off by the different statues of seals and... Kevin we did a lot of takes too we did a lot of we takes we didn't have Dan with us so we had to do it ourselves and Kevin made a compilation video and I said collab with me on it and he collabed and I accepted the engagement wasn't there so I unshared it Ooh. but that's and that's not what upset me um, so we had the time of our lives getting sucked off by all these see, you, you see the joy on our faces I mean we did have a good time. Uh, we were even at one point, there were seals like, there were seals on the bottom. It was a row of seals. So we got sucked off. And then we run up the stairs and like get a shot where we're running down the stairs. And just, it, it, was, a, it was a whole, uh, you know, we thought, okay, this is fun. We did this uh, on a show. And so we thought, okay, we can do it again. And we had fun. And we were back in the hotel room and we were giggling. We were like making a little video cut up of it. And we were giggling and having fun with it. And nobody was gung-ho about posting it. I wasn't like, I understood, you know, this, I don't know how many people are going to like this. Some people might find it funny, but some people might not, like my wife. And, um, but Tom was all, post it and, uh, uh, you know, I'll collab, you know, collab with me. Either way, I posted it. Um, <laughs> I sent the collab to him and uh, I didn't think twice about it. I understand if you didn't uh, join up on it, I didn't really care. Um, I understand. And it, w it wasn't really any big deal at all. Um, but then I wake up in the morning, okay? And I see that, I think I saw, okay, at, by that point he had collabed with it. But the video starts getting some heat, okay? And oh, yeah. from some of your fans. And uh, uh, so I was fighting back with them. They're all, this is fucking stupid. What are you doing? One, one person, this is the first person I've ever blocked. I've never blocked anybody that's not, not a bot. He's, he really pissed me off. He wrote, what kind of audience are you trying to like curate by this kind of content? And I'm all, I don't fucking, I'm not trying to go after anybody. I'm just getting sucked off. I'm, I'm the wrong guy. I clearly, great response. I'm clearly not trying <laughs> like that. I'm not like, Oh, well this is steel sucking video is going to go after this kind of, as I, I blocked the fuck. If you're, if you're a fan of the show, fuck you. I blocked you. You stay blocked. Okay. I have like fucking a thousand followers. I don't care about that. But it seems like the, the people have gotten to you a bit. Huh? No, no. On that one, it, I think it's I was taking it personally because it's a seal sucking video, and we were really. But that's not. I was so I was in the heat of it. Okay, I was in the heat of it. And I texted uh, Chad, and I'm all, "Hey, Chad, dude, we're getting some fucking blowback in this, but it's okay. Like, I'm at. Well, I'm fucking <laughs> going back on them. And then like literally like like 10 minutes later you look at it and i'm the only person on the video now <laughs> and he i don't care if he undid it because you know you're i need to keep my image good and i can't be being seen sucking seals even though we did that on the show um what hurt me was that he didn't text me and go hey like i'm gonna have to get off this video because i would have even if he wanted to delete the video i i wasn't like i wasn't like oh this video needs to stay on I was just like, if he would have texted me and said, hey, man, instead of like ghosting and just, just, just doing that, he should have said, hey, I got to get off this video. There's to, too much to, heat. To my, you're playing it like you're a lot more nonchalant about it all than you were. Was I begging you to collab with me? But you weren't like, oh, I don't care. I don't even need to post it. I don't, you wanted to we post were happy. it. I was happy posting it, but I'm talking about the collab part. I wasn't begging you to collab. You true. You got me there. You got. You me asked there. me to collab. I sent you the invite. You never did. I never said anything. 
It might have, you know, I, I thought you wouldn't notice. I, I also think there's something to you to like, people will be like, hey, you should be straightforward and like always talk to someone about something. And I do agree that is like the more ideal version of things. But sometimes you're like, hey, man, I don't want to fight about this, but I just don't want to be in on it. So I'm just going to do the quiet dip. <laughs> but there was and no like, fight to be had. I didn't even ask him to collapse. I was texting him. I was all, we're in heat. What, what should we do? I was, I was in battle. Yeah, I was in I, war. I mean more macro, not even y'all's situation, but sometimes people are like, hey, what do you do if you're annoyed with someone? It's like, oh, go up to that person and be like, hey, I'm, this is totally different, but like go up to someone and be like, hey, I'm annoyed with you. You're doing something that's bothering me. I'm like, that doesn't work a lot. Sometimes you have to like be a little weird to that person, give them a little space, like kind of avoid them, wait for them to be like, hey, what's going Like make them kind of feel something and then they'll be like hey what's going on and then you can be honest and vulnerable with them but sometimes it takes some like it takes some maneuvering to even get to that point yeah but in this situation i didn't do anything we were both getting sucked he asked me to we both agreed to post it <laughs> he specifically requested me to collab and then he just bailed you're right you're right so it's not Chai, like you fucked up dog it's man. not like i was like you up did all fuck night. up a little bit. i was no, like yeah, I, I was like when I are you gonna collab that. on this chad? It. when are you gonna collab chad come on come on you gotta get on this video chad i wasn't doing any of that I was at war with these fuckers. There's like only it was like two people, but I was at. I usually don't respond, but I hear you. I hear you. Hey, can, you know uh, what can I, I'll, go, I'll go next. My beef of the week is also Chad. Nice, but it's a hilarious beef. Um, oh yeah, 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 dude. Chad's so funny. He tag. He, you were drunk, right? Mm -hmm. Chad was partying. You saw Sebastian. You said, "Is that coming up later?" No. Okay, so you saw Sebastian. You said he's like. Probably the hardest I've laughed is watching Sebastian in the OR at the comedy store. So story. funny. Yeah. Just an incredible performer. Man, Scalco. And so you're up in uh, you're in Reno, right, with your lady. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, hey, bro, I might go to Vegas to see Sebastian again. I'm like, oh, Chad's fired up. That's awesome, man. I'm like, yeah, see, fucking stand up. That's the fucking best, dude. And then you text me and Strider on a group thread. You're like, bro, I'm going to Vegas. I'm, I, I, like, what, what action do you guys want to put down? I'm like, dude, this is fun energy, man. I'm like, let's go. I'm like, hey, put down a hundo on the Steelers to win the AFC North. Strider's like, yo, put a hundred. You and Strider have a new funny bit where you guys are Jaguars fans. You yeah. guys are like, put a hundred on the Jaguars and win the AFC South. Then Chad texts me a bunch of expletives. He's like, dude, I might be too fucking stupid to do this. How do I bet? I'm like, I'm like, oh, you got to go to like a, I'm like, he's probably drunk. I'm like, you got to go to a sports book. Go to the sports book at the casino. They'll throw the action down or they'll, or they'll help you out. And then he's like, he's like, all right, I'm, well, uh, like I'm at Terminal C. <laughs> And then I go, I go, I go, I go, where are you? And he goes, I'm getting my connecting flight huh. in Vegas. And I go, yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm I think at home. I, I, go, I go, bro, I don't think it's a sports thing. <laughs> and then Strider's like, dude, I think it's only slots at the airport. And they go, oh, fuck it, dude. And then he just sent a bunch of funny memes. And that was the, uh, oh, that's that was right. the end of it. There should be a sports book in the there airport. There should be, yeah. There should be. That's true. Yeah, because like, you'd want to get that action in before you dip. Yeah. I mean, Daddy got lit up on mimosas. Dude, Ooh, it was making mimosas. me laugh for like hours though. I was cracking up just you and the. <laughs> you dude, I almost like... missed. I almost missed the flight because I was like, "Babe, I'm gonna go find some tequilas." Because it was like 10:30, so everything was shut down. So I'm like, I'm like to. The... I'm like to the guy at like KFC. I'm like, dude, where can I get some margaritas? And he's like, Terminal B. I'm like, all right, chief. And so I just, I'm like, babe, I'll be back. I'm going on a crusade. And so I go, and I couldn't find my way back. I got three margaritas. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know where I am. And she's like, well, they're boarding. They're about to shut the door. <laughs> so I had to throw out the tequilas. Oh no, dude! I chugged one. I almost threw up, and then I ran to the plane. It's a hell of an adventure. Yeah. That was fun. I guess my beef is with Vegas for not having a sports book at, uh, at McCarran. Dude, yeah. But I, just, <laughs> I did put 15 bucks in a slot, but I lost it all. Oh, that's cute. All right. Yeah. Chad, who's your babe of the week? Uh, my babe is... Dude, Lake Tahoe? Lake Tahoe. Ooh, Daddy loves Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is beautiful. Yeah, Lake Tahoe. It's awesome. The most beautiful. It's the most, oh, you, yeah. the mountains, the lake, the, you, you, in the mountains and the, the, there's this beautiful lake. It's, it, I think it's clearer than it's ever been right now. The Alpine Lake. Yeah. Work for keep Tahoe blue. Yeah, dude. Um, I mean, if you haven't been to Tahoe, check it out. Winter it's, and summer. Been? I've never been to Tahoe. You've never dude. been to Tahoe. You, no, you, you I was supposed to go once for a bachelor party. Couldn't go because we went to Arizona to do stand up that time. Right. And then I was supposed to go for my brother's bachelor party and then they had fires up there so we had to pivot to Palm Springs. Oh, right, right. Well, dude, you gotta check it out sometime. 
Take the family. Oh, Tahoe is the is it's there's everything to do there. There's the casinos. And then I missed my buddy Joe's bachelor party there because we were right. doing stand up gigs in New York. You need to get there. You need to get there ASAP. I gotta go. So yeah. b- big bachelor party thing. But sorry, I, I, yeah. you guys were cooking. Take but, the babies. No, I, I was done. But yeah, take the family. Well, because it's a good balance, right? You got the lakes, and then you got the casinos, right? You got, you got lakes, casinos, casinos uh, uh, hiking. Snow. I'm hiking. gonna go backpacking up out there next month. Yeah, it sounds there. like it kind of has it all. You can go on a boat. Oh. The only the only thing is, I was told that it's kind of tough to water ski or wakeboard on because there's um, the water. I mean, you can only really do it in the morning. It's a little it's rocky. The only time when it's glassy. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's kind of tough. I it's know. fun to just go yeah. out. Yeah, that, that, like, out if you on get a lake boat. house, you want to be able to wakeboard nonstop. That's a, that 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 kind of diminishes the, no, the that, appeal. This lake is special. It's beauty. It's a beauty. It's not just a lake. It's a, it's a beauty. It's a, one of the few like just majestic alpine. And lakes. you think I'm psyched driving a boat on the lake? Dude, this guy driving a boat on oh, the lake? Oh, yeah, at his wow. bachelor party in Bear. <laughs> Dude, he was like. We, we got one of those pontoon shirt. boats. He was loving life, bro. Well, we were all having some fun on that boat. Um, <laughs> but it, it was. Yeah, you're uh, on Coke, right? No, 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 no. This was a long time ago, pre fentanyl. Um, yeah, we were I, having fun. I was on, on mushrooms. Boat. I was, I was boomered up. Yeah, you're on mushrooms on a boat, which is. Um, Your friends were great, dude. Brad's the man. Yeah, yeah. We could talk about that Bill Wayne song, Mona Lisa. Ooh. On what? No, nah, talking to a song. Oh, like a personal thing. He was just DJ, and I was like, "Oh, he's, oh, hit, yeah. he's hitting hits." That was fun. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, so Big Bear is good because it's like close to um, Los Angeles, but I mean, Lake Tahoe is like Big Bear on just everything's amplified. Steroids. The lake is yeah, just cause, giant. Because Bear's got like four or five restaurants. Tahoe's probably got oh yeah yeah, yeah. like twenty. Yeah, and it's just it's just a I, I find it to be a great place. But I used to go there when I was little. Um, we'd drive that's, up there. That's the thing, I took it for granted. Yeah. As a kid, I, you know, it's just Tahoe. But then I went again. That That's what really is like, I, my dad would take me there and I took it for granted. I was like, oh, we're going to Tahoe again? I want to fuck it. You know, but then you go there as an adult where you can really appreciate things. I have like great that. memories. I used to, you know, when you go to the casinos or if you went to Vegas when you were a kid and they have those big ass arcades. They yeah. look stupid now, but, and then, bing, 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 the slots. I have that like subconsciously from when like when I'm little. Well, if I hear that, I like that noise. Yeah, you get nostalgic. You kind of little and a rat tattoo it transports you back to yeah. a moment. Oh yeah, oh yeah, love Lake Tahoe. Who's your babe of the week? So do we have babe and a legend or just a babe? Both, both, both. Okay. Well, I just got back from Mexico, so I'll. Uh, you were in Mexico. I was in Mexico. I just got back last night or yesterday afternoon. Um, what were you doing? I was in Puerto Vallarta, a little vacation. Sometimes I like to bust south of the border, spread my busts internationally, bust. Did you take um, Harrison down there? No. My uh, my mom came and uh, she took care of Harrison while we went down. Uh, it's, the, it's the low season there, which means it's hot and humid, but we just chilled, um, had some margaritas, um, some tacos, y... Um, but it's Puerto Vallarta. It's, it's a, have you been? Mm-hmm. Never. Oh, yeah. It's nice. It's also nice because it's like the main gay area. And so it's like the West Hollywood of Mexico. So everything's mm-hmm. very nice. Everybody's very friendly. Um, a lot of hot dudes. Sounds hot. That fires me up. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Puerto Vallarta. Sweet. Dude, my baby of the week, been reflecting on fatherhood quite a bit. I got to give it up to my other boy, Chad. Chad D. Chad D went to uh, my junior high. He came in it as an eighth grader. He was the best basketball player, I think, in the county. He was also like two years older than everybody else. No, like a year older than everybody else. He'd been homeschooled up until that point. Bro, he rolls in. Dude is like big, large, handsome, and just chill as fuck, dude. The man. Like, just like... You didn't feel like you were hanging out with another eighth grader. You felt like you were hanging out with like a college senior. He was like mm-hmm. that chill. And uh, just like funny and cool and like ripped at basketball. And then I, he was homeschooled up until that point. But he wasn't like, a, you know, homeschool kids are weird. He wasn't weird at all. Like he was socially so at ease, not even trying to be cool. Just was like, yeah, I don't care if I'm cool. And we were all like, that makes you the man. And uh, I asked him what it was like being homeschooled. He's like, dude, it was the best. I just study for an hour in the morning and then just go play golf. Oh, that's awesome. And so... 
He goes to a different high school than me, but we stay tight. He becomes a good basketball player. He gets a girlfriend. And uh, I didn't remember this, but I guess he tells my brother. My brother was asking about having a girlfriend. He's a very respectful dude, but we're high schoolers, so he talked a little crazy. He's like, he's like, oh, yeah, dude, I just love busting in my chick. No condom. Nice. All right, well, you guess what happens? He knocks her up. Kids 15, 16 when he knocks her up were sophomores in high school. Uh, I think a lot of people would have been, like, scared, uh, you know, felt like the best decision was to not go through with it. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing if you don't go through with it, but he was like, no, I'll just step up and be a dad. We had like a party for him at our house. We're like, Chad's becoming a dad. But in my head, I'm like, this is like sad. Like you're going to miss out on your basketball career. Like he wasn't going to go pro, but he could have played pretty, probably pretty high level college. And uh, he was like, no, dude, I'm stoked. Like I love her. I think I can, I'll be a good dad. Dude, they have the kid. He gets a scholarship to a good basketball school, but not a great one. But he goes, makes a part of the deal that he can bring his, his now wife and his kid plays four years, plays well, gets his degree, leaves, gets a great job at Lowe's, moves to North Carolina with his girl. Now they have like a family of five. He runs like 10 different Lowe's. Oh, wow. He's crushing it on all fronts. Dude, that's awesome. And he never, at least not, we were good friends. At least to me, he never like complained about anything. He was like, hey, it's what happened. I'll just do it. And he just did it. He was just a man from the jump. I, yeah. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Chad, I hope you are well. You were a man from the jump, and you remained a man throughout all of it. So God bless you, brother. What an inspiration. Dude, probably has awesome. a huge dong, too. He probably did, dude. I would bet. Family of big dongers. Good, good that was folks. an inspiring story. He was the man, dude. He was so chill. He yeah. was just like 16. He's like, yeah, I guess I'm having all, a kid. It's all good, brother. Right. He's like, it's all good. Like, well, just make it work. I was like, good. Um, Chad, who's your legend of the week? My legend of the week is, and hopefully this can turn a corner in our relationship, it's your sack. Oh. Thank it's Kevin's you. sack. Thank I mean, you. it has seen countless warriors on the battlefield who thank have you. been downed. Mm-hmm. And it has covered their eyes, covered their faces, dipped in and out like a McNugget in buffalo sauce. My sack has PTSD. <laughs> I've seen so many dead soldiers. Lives. Yeah. Yeah, it's touched the ugliest parts of life. Yeah. Go it on. goes away. Go on. Well, it's just, um, it's been a great source of joy for me for years now. Okay. And fun fact, I showed him teabagging. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, he showed me and basically it was like it was dead inside of me. And then he's all, you want a teabag? We've talked about this before, right? No. We were playing Halo. Halo. And I was like, dude, you got to teabag him. He, and then he just, I, I heard from, uh, you were living in Hollywood at the time. I heard from, you know, where I was in Culver, just bing. Because I didn't play video, before the pandemic, like, I didn't play video games. I played video game like, I played Halo sporadically in college, but that's just because some of my friends had it. The last video game system I had before that was like the PlayStation 1 when I was like, you know, 12 or something. And then I just, uh... I lost interest in video games. I didn't play it at all. I never owned a system or anything. And then like as the pandemic was starting, I was just in Best Buy and there was like one Xbox there and I'm all, are things gonna shut down? Are they not gonna shut down? I should probably just buy this Xbox just in case. Then we're randomly playing Halo and he's all, why don't we start teabagging? And then I'm all, teabag. Oh, 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 I'm all, oh, my God, I love video games. And that's uh, the that's story of how we started to bust our sacks on people. It's a perfect convergence of player yeah. and part. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if he never brought that up, then that's a lot of bags that we would have missed over these past few years. My wife might have been happy, but not my soul. Now, when you were thinking about a potential partner, did you gauge their, not just tolerance, but their affinity for the bag, for the load, for all the miscellaneous- What are you talking about partner? That you like? Like your-, your My uh, wife or, yeah, your, or my no, bagging partner? <laughs> no, no, oh. your romantic partner. Did I take into consideration bagging? Or they, like that they, did you, did you like- Well, I wasn't even bagging until like a year into No, but you liked loads and stuff. Did you want a gal who was like... She would have to be comfortable with that because I don't... I'm not like... I'm not faking myself for 
like that would be hell you know just you're pretending you're somebody else i agree so she was already well aware of the I loads i can't fake it either i gotta be myself i'm already a comedian at that i mean she when she met me you know it, it was already part of the agreement and i'm talking about loads 24 7 so she just has to be a very patient tolerant person it wasn't like i was just hello honey how are you doing today Ew, loads? That guy was disgusting. You hear that guy talking about loads at dinner? <laughs> and then we got married, and I'm all, like, Ugh! you know what I did today? Because I'm really into busting. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, she, I was in the bathroom, <laughs> and she was in the bedroom, and I, I fucking, I, I slammed open the door, and I looked her in the eye, and I just went, bust. And she's all, why did you bust through the door and say bust to me? And I'm all, exactly. Dude. Well, uh, I even got her into it, the busting. Last day we were in the airport. Sorry, we we're coming through uh, customs yesterday. And there was all these people, a crowd. I'm all, dude, we got to bust through this crowd. We got to bust through these kids. We got to bust here. We got to bust there. And then she started saying bust. She got into it. Oh. Yeah, she, she likes saying bust. He sent me videos of him watching The Idol. With his uh, great show, wife. <laughs> and great the idol, show. you know, I if you haven't it. seen it, has a lot of nudity, a lot of sexual I'm a big fan. scenes. I wasn't a fan and of the weekend. Sorry to cut you off. He was terrible yeah. in it. The weekend's I, bad. Sometimes I start up before we're getting intimate. I'll turn on the weekend. Just I was oh, inspired the music's by him. great. Yeah, his music's perfect. No, no, for that. I'll just turn on his just normal music because I didn't really listen to it before. Yeah, it's good. But now with the context of his character from that show. I can get into it, and I like to get become the weekend. Oh, so that's like I'll I'll go up to her and I'll go, shh, you're thinking too much. I do that too. I call my character <laughs> Smeldros because I think his character looked like he smelled, <laughs> and so I just go, come on. But honey. I cut I cut you you're off. Not opening yourself up to all the things you could be smelling. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I cut you off though. Sorry. So he would send me videos of him watching The Idol with his wife, <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be like some sexual scene, you know. And you just hear him in the background go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and his wife being like, shut this show off. It's uh, perverted. <laughs> yeah, but she wanted to watch it. It's, she wanted to watch it in the first place. But I mean, I, so I was like, okay, we'll watch this stupid show. And she fingers herself like 10 times in the first like the five episodes. <laughs> oh, yeah, not my wife. Yeah, no, definitely not her. And then she's all like, so I, every time, what, I mean, we're basically watching a porn. So I start going, oh, oh, yeah. And she, she's all, you're ruining the fucking show. But she kept wanting to watch it. It, it's, it is that kind of show that, yeah. <laughs> Do you think they're getting a season two? No, 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 no. I wish, dude, I'd rather a million of those shows than some of the other boring shit that comes out. You think if The Weeknd wasn't doing all that shit in that show, that would be uh, interesting at all? No, I think if they had a better actor play The Weeknd part, it would have been a great show. I think the show was actually really good. I think he was just such a bad actor, and he was fun to watch in a, oh my God, I can't believe how bad this guy is at it. I think but, it was more the story. I think you're being a little too harsh on The Weeknd. Like, no, I thought, a random club. Like, I thought it was interesting it, but at if, first. If he would have been a cooler guy, if it would have been Michael B. Jordan playing that part, or just someone who had a bit more... Uh, believability I, I think it could have worked really well he's but, I, but I think it me. still works in that he's such a train wreck you're like wow it's just like goofy funny to watch this guy try yeah, that but it was fun. I don't I don't think I would have enjoyed I, the show if 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 the weekend wasn't in there just doing that shit that's true it added a, it, it, it played to a different sensibility for sure all right um my uh, legend of the week got to be my partner my my girlfriend um bro Given birth, carrying the child for nine months, that's tough enough. But then given birth, that's tough. And then the after part is tough. We make out like bandits in the reproductive gambit. It's crazy. And I, uh, I don't know. She's just been such a soldier throughout all of it. She's so loving towards me, towards the kids. I, I just really admire uh, the, what she sacrificed for all of us. So thank you, honey. It uh, it means a lot to to me and the kiddos. We she, love you. Does she listen to the pod? She does. Oh wow, she does listen. Well, she's gonna hear that, and she's gonna be uh, very happy with that. I hope so. Yeah, that. she deserves it. Yeah, it's very nice of you. What the hell's the pod for? If not to be kind. But that it, that is uh, what she's going through. Is is she walking yet? Or no? yeah, she's moving around. But moving yeah, around. dude, it was. I mean, physically, holy yeah, shit. Now you got to take care of the fucking kids. That's the other thing. You get thrown uh, into the deep end. They just send you home. But you know, we had two. 
They just sent us home. With- Have you bonded with your kids yet? I didn't bond until my kid was like laughing. You know what? I I've don't bonded. Worry about it I've, bond. I bonded really quickly, and I had a friend who's a, a dad, and his kids are like high school. He's like, oh, don't expect the first few months to be like as meaningful as you want them to be. So I had low expectations, and maybe that was helpful. But I feel very you're more emo- emotional, so you, you're bonding early. Yeah, I feel very connected to them. But I can't wait mm. for the next part. But I'm, I already feel like these are my fucking dudes, and I love them. But they're still the the, the first like three months. They're no, just they're just like, little globs. Uh, but they're so funny. The faces till they, and their eyes and all their shit. It's hilarious. Wait till they uh, start laughing. It might take a little longer for yours to laugh be, than mine because you know, daddy is. You know, I'm on. I, I'll, <laughs> if, if I can't get them to laugh, I'll bring you over. Yeah, yeah, bring and me then over. I'll, I'll no, have, they're gonna laugh because they naturally just laugh at anything. But I think mine. But I might be doing really. things wrong, and you can come yeah. over and hump correctly and show them how it's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring Elmo over. Yeah, bring over the guitar, the, the Elmo. Yeah. You oh, I can it. bring over the guitar and sing for them. You yeah. got it. They got to have music in their life. You're like Carrot Top. The compliment. I mean, it's just a comparison. You guys bring a lot of shit to things. He's a he's a cool cat. Bro. He's great. <laughs> Man. You know he was on that plane when that woman started screaming. And we don't have Did to go. He, oh, plane. he was on the one where the lady was like. Yeah, he yeah. says he was on that plane when she's all. That guy's not fucking real. That lady's but, kind of believable. But I kind of believe that. It's lady. not clear that she was talking about him, but it's. I find it weird that he was on that flight. Oh, you think it was Carrot Top related? Well, if there's anybody you're gonna say that's not real, wouldn't you say it if Carrot Top's sitting in the back of the plane? No, he's not a reptilian, bro. But wouldn't he be? Yeah, first he's cl- he's he he seems like he's been made fake, but he seems like he was real. At but one he would point. be first class, yeah. right? Carrot Top would be first class. I hope. So he's been working his ass yeah. off for a long time. On a flight to Orlando. Dude, I mean, he's... That guy's loaded. He's, he's oh, been yeah. doing weekend gigs in oh, yeah. Vegas. Or Does he do nightly in Vegas? I, I think so. I, I'm not, I don't think... Oh, it's... I mean, close he has to a that. It's like a regular schedule, though. Yeah. He's, he's like five nights a week or something he's like that. He's at the, the Luxor. I haven't seen him, but I would like to see him. <laughs> My dad, I try to stay... At the Luxor? I tried to stay at the Luxor in the, when Windows? I was a kid. I, oh. I convinced my parents, because my dad had a trade show out there, to go to uh, Excalibur and then Luxor. And my dad had both went, we're not staying here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of from, course. My dad was like, <laughs> him and my mom. Like, Where'd you like, stay? We ended up staying at MGM. MGM, okay. Yeah. Close enough. Was, this was decades ago. Chad, who's your, what's your quote of the week? Oh. Uh, Wait, I, I had a legend. <clears throat> Oh, did I skip oh. you, bro? You skipped me. Oh, that's bad. that's the first time I've come prepared. With bad a form, bad form. That's the first time. I've Who's come your prepared. legend? My legend, because I thought, because we're speaking of legal stuff, it's a legal podcast. My legend of the week is Afro Man. You remember oh, the, yeah. the rapper Afro Man? Of course. Incredible, one of the most talented rappers. That's I, I some of his that album that he had. You're because familiar, got, right? Uh, she won't. Got, yeah, uh, she won't let me fuck. I, I really need a bust a nut. You know all that shit. Yeah. He had his house raided. He lives in some tiny town in Ohio. I don't know why he lives out there, but he just lives in this tiny town in Ohio. The cops somehow got this bullshit warrant to search his home for, like, kidnapping and, I think, like, drugs and all this other stuff, which he wasn't charged with. It's clearly all bullshit. We don't know how they got... You know, judges just sign warrants just willy-nilly. And when they came to search his house, he wasn't home. And they uh, they didn't just, like, gently come into the house. They, like, busted down his door um, and did all this shit. And uh, he, um, he caught it on his, like, uh, ring cam and... Uh, uh, I think I'm telling this story too slow, but he caught all the cops raiding his house on the ring cam and there was this one obese cop and it, the cop like put down his gun for a second to look at like a some lemon pound cake on his table. Um, and then so he made a bunch of songs about the cops and basically like making fun of this cop and trying to get like donations for his like uh, door that they kicked down and stuff like that. And now the cops have sued him for making songs about them when they raided his house, uh, most likely illegally raided his house, and they're suing him for, like, uh, using their likeness because he put, like, the fat cop on his shirt and says, like, do you want pound cake or something like that? So I, I'm i just saying Afro Man, and he's fighting the good fight. He has the ACL with, ACLU with him out there. 
Um, I was reading the, the briefs and everything on it. Um, but basically, the cops are suing Afro Man for invasion of privacy when they Invaded raided his, his house and he's using the pictures of them inside his house and they're saying he invaded their privacy oh this is good when they're in his house it's the biggest bullshit lawsuit it's it must they be just don't myth. like that they got made to look like asses because yeah made this hilarious so they're, they're suing him of invasion of privacy and then they're su suing him up for like using his their likeness because they're putting he's putting their picture um on the you know on his merchandise and stuff um so i'm wishing uh, I'm, i just want to send out good vibes to afro man out there um and um keep fighting the good fight it's a bullshit lawsuit i think it's got it's you know they're raiding uh his hat i think it's like they're how are, how are they even justified in suing him they couldn't do it in like california because there's there's something called like anti-slap laws not about back jacking off not you think anti-slap laws are about that it's not about that anti-slap laws are basically you can't sue anybody for engaging in a uh like a first amendment protected activity it's a nice nipple um so it's more difficult to do that here because you can get things like attorney's fees and stuff like that well, we're all getting tired right now and uh, i i don't want to continue talking about this case anymore but afro man uh is the legend of the week and that's yeah all right. nice well going off that for my quote i went to the players ball last year and guess who was there afro man oh really and he i didn't speak with him but uh this one guy and this meant a lot to me as i was leaving this one guy who was there he's like he looks at me and he's like you have a good night player and that meant a lot to me that was huge. oh wow incredible yeah. game recognized game kev what's your quote of the week for the audio listeners bust I didn't prepare for that one bust so I'm just going to say bust um mine is um from the movie Biker Boys and uh me and my brother were talking about it today cuz he's like when are you going to show your kids the movie Biker Boys cuz that was wow. a, that was a regular one Huge for me and, me and the homies and me and my bro really and then uh and I've been catching a lot of heat because I don't want to tell them, I don't want to do Santa Claus. I don't want my kids to learn about Santa Claus. We're not going to do Santa. We're going to do mm. Christmas, but we're not going to do Santa Claus. Because I just think there's so much real stuff to teach them about. Why make the fantasy more compelling than what's real? And then my brother, I've been getting heat. People have been messaging me, video messages. They're all cool. They're like, bro, you got to tell them about Santa Claus. I'm like, dog, to quote Biker Boys... Biker boys, we make our own rules. So my phrase of the week. What's up? What's up, dudes? What's up? Well, you can hear a mouse piss on cotton in here. What's up? <laughs> I mean, what, you want our thoughts on that? Well, I, I, look, I know where Chad's at. I don't really care about Santa Claus, but I think you're overthinking it. Who cares? But then who cares <laughs> the other way? Exactly. Who cares? That's what I'm saying. So just, like, go with the flow at the moment. I'm, I'm not not doing that. I think you are. You're saying from the get-go, I don't want him to see Santa. Because he's gonna, this gonna do this to him. Probably he's not gonna do shit to him. You know, you might be right that people might be interpreting what I'm saying that way. But honestly, if my kids are like, "Yo, we want to believe in Santa," I'll roll that way. Hmm. You think they'll phrase it that way? I hope so. What if you create something? If I else raise for them right. Then? What if you create something <laughs> else for them to believe in? Make it fun. Like the atom. Yeah. You mean the the el like the atom? Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna dress up like an atom? <laughs> yeah. You could do that. Yeah, man. Electron can be in two places at once, right? That's quantum mechanics? Possibly, yeah. yeah. Isn't that as... 
wonderful? No. <laughs> Come on. Well, what if you made it jolly? What if you made the electron jolly fat and gray bearded? If it was jolly fat and gray bearded and gave me presents? Yes. I'd be like that's a fucking cool ass Adam. Well, that's what I'm saying. If Let's update be, it's a it. Cool electron. Let's update the program. If you can be, if you're gonna be an Adam, uh, Chad would be a great black hole because he's endlessly deep. <laughs> and you penetrate it. Yeah, I'm talking about like penetration. But when you come into my black hole, time ceases to exist. Ooh. It's a big divide, <laughs> y'all. Y'all are <laughs> claws heads, dude. Mm -hmm. claws head. You're a claws head. Dude, imagine a... watching Jingle all the way and being like, "Who the fuck is that guy?" I'm but you love head. Santa more than most, though. Yeah, I love I love wonder. I love you know the imagination. I love being like, "Man, I wonder what he's doing in the North Pole right well, now." He's probably does he have to be Santa Claus? Can somebody just dress Claus? like Santa Claus? Well, so if, if you have a big brood of kiddos, which I I do predict, like if I'm being the Grinch when it comes to this. Are you not bringing the brood around on Christmas because you think I might like bust up the fun, dude? If if I brought That's them around and you were like and you were like, "Yo, Santa's not real," it's fist. <laughs> it's what? It's fist. It's fist. Dude. You gonna hit me? <laughs> well, I know who can take a good fist. I just come in and just take my shirt off and mm -hmm. just punch me. Yeah. He told my kids about Santa piece of shit. Dude, it's, I, I would get it. I would respect it. I would respect it, for real. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take that hit. It's not my place. Um, what are you going to say, a fisting thing? Oh, I was just going to say, uh, if you're going to be fisting, uh, Black Hole would be a good guy to have over there. Because <laughs> he could take a fist. Chet, what's your phrase that we're forgetting after it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I posted the <laughs> this clip. No, I think it's just so funny, but you know, it's kind of immature, but it's a point of view of Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan in Revenge of the Sith. He's getting into a hiding spot in Padme's ship. Um, and someone made a meme where a POV, you're about to unleash an unholy bowel movement in the airplane bathroom, and it's just Obi-Wan getting in there. Uh, kids are laughing. I think it's so funny. Um... So yeah, that's my phrase that we forget. <laughs> Sorry. Oh man. Okay. Kevin. Um Don't let anybody ever tell you you're not good enough to suck them off. You are just as important as anybody else in this world. And your mouth will take you places. For real? That you could never believe, but not in like a weird, like in a, like this is your decision kind of thing. So get after it. I didn't come prepared with that. I thought the quote. No, but you know what's cool about that is a brand new voice. Thank you. So, like in terms of painting that full, you know, mosaic of who you are on this podcast. Did I we talk that, about that sucking added... too much on this? No, no don't, don't no, get cold don't, feet. No. I'm, getting, I'm getting. Yeah, like I mean, at hour three, I'm getting self-conscious. Um, like, that's been a new dimension to you too. You've you've second. I'm like the, yeah. the schmoll never second guesses, and this has I, been. Your episode of reflection, because I feel like, like it's funny. Is, there's a dark night of the soul in religious yeah. texts, and this is kind of that for yeah. your, your loads. I feel like it's funny, but you know, dude, my phrase of the week for getting after it is: um, I say this to my kiddos when they're crying. I go, uh, "It's all right, it's all right, it's all right." He moves in mysterious ways, or if I'm talking to the girl. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. She moves in mysterious ways. It's all right. Who's that by? What is that? You oh, it's too. U2. Yeah, yeah, yeah U2. U2. Yeah. Bono. Bono. I saw Bono once. Um, Air one. Real quick. No, I saw him in the Capitol when I was interning in the U.S. Capitol. You did that? Oh, the yeah, U.S. Capitol? In college, I interned for a congressman. I was in D.C. Strider did that. Oh, he did? Yeah, you guys haven't chatted about that? 
No, no, no. He did that sophomore year of high school summer. Oh, he was a page. He was a page, congressional was, page. Uh, yeah, I was like an intern when I was in college. Oh, okay, so that's like more official shit. Yeah, but uh, we're both sucking people off, speaking of that. But uh, I was, so it's under, there's an underground area, and uh, I saw this this big mass of people. And then you see this guy, and he has, so we're, we're like 30 feet underground, and he's wearing his sunglasses underground. That's all I... I'm not a good storyteller. I need to work on that storytelling, but yeah. I, I think we're all just beat, bro. Yeah. But I love what we're doing. It's a, Is this like a three-hour podcast? Almost. This so might be behind know. the honors home one. This might be the longest one we've ever done. Nothing wrong with that. People like long podcasts. It'll be a fun listen for sure. Yeah. And if, you know. We don't have to end either. Yes, we do. Yeah, we're tired. Aaron's got to go home. Aaron has to go bust. Aaron, you quit <laughs> first, dude. <laughs> Aaron, do you want to take us out on a hump? Oh, yeah. Oh, I like oh! that. <laughs> I like that. That was pretty good, dude. Go. Sign us off. <laughs>